And you know, the pressure hit from Gornet should be enough. Lingering curse even being used. Oh, oh no! He got revved! Souls owns Gornet! Oh no! Souls with the god mode play knocks Gornet into the wall with Revenant downstate. That's actually big. That's going to force a 4v5 for a good amount of time. I mean, that's something, right? Like, <laughs> okay. I, I was in holiday this week, so I played uh, quite a lot, a lot. Okay. And uh, is people are asking for people to play MHE. They say they have no team. I can play MHE, I have no team. Yeah, okay, okay. But Come on, be motivated. You are you are FK in Game Wars 2 the whole the whole week. And you think like you're doing PvP and you are not doing the MH. Make your own team be you're wasting your time in PvP doing nothing. Like. And and we have no one to face. It's the exact same on NA. People think you can beat USA, blah 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 blah, but they are not playing. Like None of that is truly important because what's really important is Cormier's Clash, Monthly AT, Revenge of the Catalyst, French Cheese. Yes, the French have been tired of calling themselves the French Worms. They have now renamed themselves to French Cheese instead. As always, let's go ahead and take a look and see what the hell is going on there. I actually don't know who is playing um, whatsoever. In this monthly automated tournament, we've got, what, how many rounds? Five rounds. It's a slightly shorter event today. It's a popular gizmo, though, the dragon. So I do actually expect a little bit of fierce competition. We'll use this first round to just kind of, you know, scout a little bit. See what the hell is going on. See who's in the mix. Let's go ahead and just try and click some of these games and get into it. Souls is playing. Let's check this out. Souls gaming. Souls content. Let's check it out. Boom. What do we have here? Souls, Demolish, Ninot, Avancine, and Aeon, actually. But renamed Clarity. New name, Clarity. Boom. There it is. This is like some random pug team. They're probably going to get memes. Actually, it is a powerful roster, though, actually. We have the double catalyst here, Vindicator from Souls. Probably playing the... Wait, is he still playing the Salvation Bill? He actually is. Interesting. I think a lot of um, Vindicators going a little bit more aggressive this time uh, towards Devastation. But Souls going with the Old Faithful, going with the slightly more durable build. The Salvation trait line, damage reduction, all that kind of good stuff there. Still with the big damage dodge, though. Uh, <laughs> this dodge got wrecked in, uh, in PvP. It doesn't even chill anymore. Um, so, yeah. CMC was like, you know, I want to make sure no one ever uses that dodge trait. Like, we need to make sure that doesn't happen. I want to make some kind of insane abomination. Yeah, we do actually have Demolish on Chronomancer, too. You know, there are actually a few, you know, this is contrary to popular belief, guys. There actually are a few Mesmer builds that are floating around there, right? I know that Mesmer is seen as a bit of a meme, but not really necessarily the case. There are some Mesmer builds about the place. This Chronomancer build, for example, is actually a bit of a menace. Can be a bit annoying to play against, for sure. Uh, utilizing this Aristocracy rune to stack up a lot of might, right? Every weakness stack you apply, uh, you gain five might, right? And there's a lot of weakness on this build, this overall. So you can actually really uh, be pretty uh, pretty menacing on this setup. Again, Virtuoso is the other Mesmer build that you see play uh, right now. Mirage, not so much, but I mean, you can still, you can play it if you want to. I mean, I'm not sure if you do want to, but you can, if that's the kind of thing that you're into there. But anyway, boys, thanks to the raid, of course. Let's go ahead and check out some of these games, though. This is actually a, a solid team. Could definitely be compared. I'm expecting to see that definitely in top eight for sure. That's uh, a powerful roster. Let's see what the Frenchies are actually running. Let's see who's playing on Frenchies. Okay. So what do we got here? Yeah, they're, they're such role players. They really are. And actually, here we go. It is going to be the return of the Daredevil. Of course, Daredevil has had some changes. Specifically, Steel. You don't have Swipe anymore. You now have Steel. For that 1,200 range. Omega Shadow Step, and it is a Chronomancer again coming through from Kill here. Now, of course, this is very early days, it's early round, uh, so this might be more on the meme side for sure right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> Wait, Teapot, explain our name team okay. French cheese, because when you say it, it makes Frenchies. French cheese, because we are French and we are cheese monthly AT. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> Perma. Because permanently cheesing. I mean, there you go. It's now been explained. We have uh, explained the entire setup here. That makes some sense here. You know, it does make a lot of sense here. Monthly AT, French cheese, fully enabled. Got the Tempest here from Zealith. 
Daredevil from Draza. We have Virtuoso from Kill and Double Catalyst. Still going strong here. In fact, this time going with the Armor of Earth, actually. Of course, this newly buffed Hold ability. Uh, now with a much shorter Seems cooldown and a bit of barrier when you have boons. Of course, Catalyst applies a whole bunch of boons, so and that will certainly deliver some value the there. But yep, it's going to be the Signet of Air for Raikkonen and Esprit going with the Armor of Earth. So basically more stability. A little bit of a longer cooldown on the stun break there, of course. And without the blind and base movement speed increased. But stability, protection, and barrier is certainly a potent thing to have. Again, I do think this is going to be a little bit no rough for all of these teams early on. I'm expecting essentially a 500-0 score in favor of the French here. And we'll have to see how they actually develop this composition later on. Uh, we could see some adjustments. Maybe the Chrono is good. Maybe the Thief is going to see play. But again, it's very early rounds. And honestly, a lot of teams uh, probably don't, you know, they, they probably uh, do a little bit of warm-up. Don't go full try hard early on. Particularly seeing as they know they are going to get spectated. Actually, you've got to think about this from their perspective too. Uh, they want to be a little bit careful with actually giving away their composition and strategy too early because they know that streamers, uh, myself for example, are going to be watching these games and you know they are going to face some stiff competitionists. So they don't want to give all of their secrets away too early. Let's see what else we got here. What have we got? Oh, we actually have. Oh yeah, yeah, we got some interesting teams here. We got some big teams, interesting gamers here. Uh, Binster team. Got a little bit of a pug here, I'd say. Core Guardian, Mirage, Core Necromancer, Daredevil, and the Vindicator. What build is this, actually? Is this the... Yeah, this is the Retribution Devastation build. Interesting. Very interesting setup here. I'll be honest, just two games going, you know, two, uh, two teams going crazy. Who is the competition of that? What I want to know is who is going to be challenging the French? But like, that's the big question to me here. I, and I'm not sure I actually see them. Could be this roster, actually. I think I saw some at the bottom here that could be very powerful. Yeah, this is pretty powerful, actually. Yeah. We have Maya. We have Stranger. We have Digitale, Zeon. And, of course, Andreas on Splish, Splash, Sploosh on Support Tempest. This is definitely a powerful roster. I'm not sure if it's really going to be established enough to actually take on the French. See, this is the big advantage that the French have here, guys. This is the issue. Um, this is the really, really big problem. Uh, is that it's very, very difficult to actually have enough synergy to take down the French. Because their power is not just they're excellent players. They are, of course, excellent players. They also practice a lot. They train a lot. They have great synergy that they built up over months, even years at this point, playing together and competing together. That's powerful. You can never underestimate that. Anyone who's played competitively in any game, or oh hell, even in real life, can tell you that knowing who you're playing with, knowing your team is incredibly important for actually being an effective unit. Now, we do see something very spicy here, though, actually. We now do have another very powerful roster, and, and this these are some faces that I think we all know here. We've got Chunsu here, the Rotator, aka Fly, on the Daredevil. We have Not a Melon here on, what is this? CMC despawned again. Uh, maybe a slight critique on the state of balance right now. We have uh, Magia, Wolf Spider, on another Catalyst, and Gornet on Harbinger. You know, in some sense, like, the, the, you know, this, you know, Gornet, Necro Overlord, big Necro fan. Necro right now, honestly... I don't think it's that good. You know, this is the old death magic build. This has been heavily nerfed, though. You don't really get nearly the protection uptime that you used to from Corruptor's Fervor. However, if anyone can make it work, it certainly is going to be Gornet. Uh, Spectral Armor having a cooldown reduction may well help with survivability here for sure. Uh, but I'm, I'm certainly a little bit worried for anyone playing Necromancer right now. Uh, when you're up against Double Catalyst, when you're up against, uh, you know, well, even a Thief potentially on the enemy team, this is going to be very difficult to survive for a Necromancer. So we'll see if Gornet does continue playing with this. I mean, Gornet does play some other things. Can play Spellbreak. It can play Herald as well, although Herald's not doing so hot right now and a whole bunch of other builds. Uh, Gornet definitely a fairly flexible player despite being known for Necromancer gameplay of course. Did you see that? But we'll see. We point. shall see what happens later on but I think this roster might actually be one of the ones that could definitely challenge the French um, as of right now. The other ones I have uh, I, I definitely have my doubts about overall. Uh, there was actually a 500 0 game here, so Ghost could maybe be a team that we should be looking at here. Blue However, I think now it's time to just find an exciting game, maybe, and see if we can find a, a fun matchup to finish the end of this round, because obviously this game is basically going to be over. Let's go to this game here. Let's go check it out. So, on the red team, we have Chocolate. Ah, Timper. Ah, we have, what is this, Promenesis. Okay, we have Pro... <laughs> Pro Kank Diagnoser and Zenvo. It's Cranel here 
on Worldbender, going against Stellan, Mansa Musa, Gam, Shinto Raijin, and Skog X. What a beautiful roster of PvP players. You just love to see that. Harbinger from Selm does get obliterated here by all this damage. There's a lot of damage here, actually. Uh, Chronomancer, Willbender, Hollow, and Daredevil. That Necromancer is certainly going to get bullied pretty hard in this game, I would say. Going to be a little bit tricky to survive overall. However, the pressure continues, and uh, Red Team, they have a very good continuous aggressive momentum here, right? They get, pick up another kill just as we have a respawn coming through uh, from the blue team. So, blue team in a lot of trouble right now, I'd say. Bell will be up in about a minute. This Willbender is just desperately trying to hold on, even trying to get some counter-aggression, but I think the time is up here. Harbinger can't really help out without going in there and dying themselves, so this is a bit of a problem. I think that I feel like I have cursed them almost. I've cursed the blue team. It was a very close matchup. However, I now believe that red team has a pretty colossal advantage here. Uh, as they're very much locked in their own base. Quite difficult to break up. They're even getting pressured while they're up there. Yeah, you can see that healing cooldowns are actually being used by the blue team to just sustain this while the thief simply uses shortbow attacks to pressure them up. They, look, the thief is actually gatekeeping them. This is actually insane. Now, the thief, oh, the thief may have greeted here. Yep. I mean, well, you know, the, that's that's what you get for gatekeeping, guys. You just get obliterated, apparently, uh, by a bunch of burn stacks. But anyway, that's the end of that, I suppose. Thief pushing their luck significantly uh, in that particular matchup. But there you go. Let's see what continues here. Oh, I think this is a, <laughs> yeah, this is a, a highly rated player, I believe, uh, here on the red team with this Holosmith. Impressive stuff, guys. Very impressive stuff. Bell is now up in a 50 seconds. Oh, yeah, the Hollow insta dies there to the Willbender and the Harbinger. That's not a good time to die either. There is a counter kill on the other side. It is this Guardian Gambit to get this revival. Does have the Signet, but doesn't need it. Gets the hand revival just without that, with the Thief coming in to help out. Bit of potential here for the, um, bit of potential for the blue team here, I think. As they have eliminated that Hollow Smith. If they can win this Bell, this could be very, very big. Who won the first Bell? It was the blue team. So if they're able to get this again, they're going to be having a very, very good time. They do right now have the outnumber. Their Thief is decapping, though. So they're kind of fighting on even terms there. They need to win this fight. The Necromancer are already getting bullied. The Signet is available. Some good healing and good CC comes through, keeping that Necromancer off the time. It actually looks like the Tempest from Red is going to go down. And the Wilbur, but actually, blue team might be able to actually make something work here. The revives do come through. No, it doesn't actually. That was the Vapor form, in fact. Not a revival. That cleave is going to come through. That's the Tempest support dealt with. Necromancer from blue, very, very low. Getting a little bit of healing does go down. Say, is there a Signet available? I think there is. Might just send the Handras. Yeah, they're going to get the Handras anyway, so that's fine. Blue need to resolve this, though. Red are running away, and this should give the bell to the blue team. However, the Thief is here. Yeah, some maybe not great rotations here by Blue, leaving the Guardian to deal with this Thief. Not really going to work out super well. The Necromancer is here, and that should secure the bell. There it is. Blue team now getting back into this a little bit. Now they need to see if they can push Red some map control. And there's not much time left as well. So Blue, they're on a bit of a time crunch here. Let's see if they can make this comeback. Zenvo does go down state. Skog should be able to then move away elsewhere on the map while the uh, Revenant will hold on to that. Oh, this Necromancer a little bit exposed though. Horsemith going in for that kill. The Guardian is available to potentially save the day here. Yeah, the support in a good spot here. Needs to go and help that Necro. Thief very low from red. If Skog could get that kill, that would be huge. Removing that thief at this vital moment in the game would be very impressive for the blue team. That will give them the map presence they need. Unfortunately, the thief does wriggle away. Zenvo still not alive again. This could come down to the final bell. Of course, it will be a 75-point bell in favor of the blue team if they're able to actually obtain that. Let's see if they can make that happen. Blue Willbender very low, as is the Harbinger. Oh, I think the red team might be able to pick up some kills here. Yes, they are. Signet, is that going to land? I believe it is. Necromancer, are ridiculous. I can't believe no one has killed this guy. Uh, should be able to get some kind of spot. Needs to use the heal skill here. Yeah. Ooh. 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 Can't get it in time. The thief gets a very big snipe. And blue team now begins to crumble. Very good pick here by the thief. Finishes that off. Support guardian from blue also falls down. And, oh, I do believe that blue team has crumbled right at the last second. They were really coming back in this game. But I think that is pretty much going to end them in a pretty big way. Red should be able to lock this game down now with a flurry of kills. Three kills being picked up. The, the bell in 30 seconds. Blue. It's very difficult. Getting the bell isn't actually good enough here, is it? No, unfortunately it isn't good enough. Red team wins a capture point. That's a bit rough. That's a little bit rough. Red team wins a capture point. Mm, yeah, they get the double cap. Bell up in five, and red's already in position, and blue really isn't. It's a big problem. 
It's a big, big problem here. Red waiting. Of course, blue is now surging towards this. They know they need to get this objective pretty quickly and then win the rest of the map. But they only have three minutes left to win this game. Oh, the red will burn. It does take a lot of pressure. It does, of course, still have renewed focus. So we'll have some survivability here. It's not over. I mean, if Blue can actually resolve this fight very, very quickly, and they might be able to. Wow, a lot of pressure on the Tempest. The Tempest getting focused very hard once again. Both supports taking a beating, actually, in this matchup. Stellan now the main focus here by the looks of that, by the red team. Red trying to get that Necromancer out of play. Can they make that happen? Yes, they can. I don't think that's reviable either. That's going to be very hard to res that. They're actually going to go for it. There it is. Stability will be available. Can they get this? Oh, the pressure is absolutely colossal. The countercleave is solid, but it's not going to be good enough. And yeah, red team are going to run away with this game at this stage as that Necromancer being eliminated makes this fight outnumbered, making the entire position of blue in this game utterly untenable. They're all getting cleaned up here. A valiant last stand, a valiant last stand here in this game. But that is going to be the end of that. Let's see if there are any other games still going on. This actually might be the last one. Wow, this actually may well be the final game of the round. Very exciting stuff. Uh, yeah, a few close ones here. A, a few close gamers. Is Willbender the play for PvP Guardians right now? I'd say Willbender. Uh, I mean, in ranked, Dragon Hunt is good. I think all the Guardian specs except Firebrand are good for ranked at least. Uh, but for competitive, yeah, you're probably going to see a lot more Willbenders and core support Guardians. Firebrand and DH a little bit less so. But for ranked, Dragon Hunter is definitely strong. I mean, most things are strong in ranked, right? With a few exceptions. There it is. Game over. 500 to 277. Incredible. You love to see it. You love to see it. Okay. Game over. Next round. What's it going to be? I think SimSouls versus Nico Nico Nico. That could be a good game, actually. Could be a good one. Now, where are the Frenchies? Fr uh, who is Ghost? Let's actually see who Ghost is. I'll see you. Likewise, Floody. The Worms are not five catalysts. Let's see who this Ghost team is, uh, because I don't know. And they actually 500 owed in the first round, so this could indicate that they are a very powerful roster. Let's take a look. Uh, oh, it is... Oh, yeah, this is just a pug. And that's fair enough. That is fair enough. I mean, sometimes you win 500 owed. Sometimes you do win 500 But yeah, this will probably be a very straightforward game um, for the Frenchies. Here they are. And yeah, well, uh, you know, I could see them playing this comp. I could 100% see this. We'll see if it goes all the way to the finals. Double Catalyst. I mean, look, we've made some improvements here, right? It was five Catalysts last time. We've been upgraded to just two. So that's pretty nice, I would say. You know, I'm, uh, I think we can all say this is an improvement. Maybe next month it will be only one. Yeah, well, you know, it's uh, baby steps, guys. Baby steps. I miss five catalysts. And who here in the... Ch if you guys want five catalysts well, to come back, soon. please put CMC Gar in the chat. If you want catalysts to be deleted from existence... Please put CMCW in the chat. Hmm. Well, I mean, it looks like a lot of people want the Catalyst back. Hold on to your points. Seize theirs. Hmm. Okay. Okay. CMC returned. I do like that one as well. You know, he's got the wicked sunglasses there, but yeah, let's go ahead and check out some other games. I think this one uh, is, yeah, it's going to be fairly straightforward for the French. Let's take a look Just at... Like Blue hmm, team takes a I point. think this one can be pretty good. Let's take a look. Let's examine the situation. So, on the Nico Nico News team, yeah, yeah, this is definitely a powerful roster. So we have Double Catalyst from Ambra and Nico Nico Ni. And yeah, Amber playing the hammer. Definitely does like to play some, you know, slightly different elementalist builds as Amber. Uh, not one to conform overly necessarily, like playing the, uh, the hammer build it. Kind of the old school catalyst build. This is the Scepter. Set up here from And You. Fallon 
on the brand new Hollow Smith. And Hollow, actually looking very good right now. A powerful build, my friends. The toolkit can really yoink people with that. So definitely a pretty amusing weapon set or other uh, kit to play with that. Spocker on Daredevil. Oh, Condi, by the looks of it. Wait, is this Condi? No, it's not Condi. It's actually Critical Strikes. Uh, but going with impairing daggers, just for the immobilize, I guess the debilitating effect, rather than necessarily just the damage. You know, 900 range immobilize, uh, slow poison and a bit of DPS. Certainly not bad whatsoever. I was thinking like, ooh, what is going on? But no, it is the Berserker Amulet with Rune of Divinity with Dagger Pistol and Shortbow with Critical Strikes, though. Trickery Critical Strikes. Big damage. Instead of what you might normally see, you might see uh, you know, slightly different setups here, normally. But anyway, Sid News the other day, now everyone follows. Ah, yes. Yeah, I need to be keeping up with my Thief streamers then, huh? I've been slacking. I actually haven't been watching like nearly that. as much Twitch as I normally do. I'm out of the loop, guys. I'm touching grass too much these days. What's happened to me, man? What's going on? Unbelievable. But anyway, pretty intense matchup so far. And on the blue team, it's the double catalyst support guard in there from Clarity and uh, Souls here on Vindicator and the Chronomancer here from Demolish. So this team fight looking good for blue. However, it's worth noting that Souls did die here. Amber able to pick up that kill combined with Spocker. So map control looking a little bit red favored. However, the fight does completely collapse for red. So blue able to kind of counter the kills here. And they, let's see what if they can, well, let's see if they can turn that into something. That's the important thing here. Another that? kill will be massive. Is this catalyst going to fall? Lightning flash is available, but it's not going to be good enough there. The catalyst pursues. The pa the catalyst kills. There is no escape for the red catalyst. The and now, what's blue going to do? So, we actually have not Ninot here in position, defending this location here. Grabbing that windmill. Revenant back in play two here point. from Souls. Back over to the mansion. Haven't seen hunting down or potentially looking to shove away this catalyst so that Souls can actually get some control over this. And then probably essentially begin this 1v1. Now, this particular build that Souls played has actually been nerfed because basically the base damage of Vindicator has gone down a significant amount. And that is certainly going to make this matchup a lot more challenging. And you can see here, Souls is having a very, very bad time. Uh, not able to pressure into this whatsoever. Honestly, taking a mass... I mean, he's just dead. Yeah, I mean, this is not really where you want to be. I mean, I was certainly not expecting to see this build um, played very much uh, because of those nerfs, because of the damage output, and of course, because of how strong uh, that uh, catalyst is in the 1v1 situation. I do think that blue team are going to have to figure something out. There. They cannot be using souls to 1v1. They need to be pushing him somewhere else, uh, you know, into a, a 2v2 or something like that, or even a team fight, because I just do not think he's going to be able to hold his own in these blue 1v1s team, whatsoever. Uh, it's, I mean, catalyst is pretty good, and, and Vindicator a little bit less. So, uh, if that's going to be a case of maybe in the next game changing over to a more aggressive build, um, I don't know, maybe even trying something like Condi Herald instead. Uh, but yeah, I don't think this setup's going to work. He's going to attempt to take this 1v1 again, but uh, this is going to be even worse. Actually, a Spocker is lurking around and will pretty much immediately be able to get in on the action here. And this is very, very bad. I mean, Souls will try and play as defensively as possible here, but I mean, this is not looking good whatsoever. Does have a block available, so that is something, and but it's not going to be good enough, I'm afraid. And Souls falls again. And yeah, blue team, they've got to figure this out because they are doing really well in these fights, but they are not controlling the map very well because they are essentially... Uh, Souls is not being utilized to his fullest potential here, unfortunately. And, you know, Guild Wars 2 PvP, you know, of course it is a skill-based game mode, but you also have to consider counters and how things actually play out. You can't just randomly, um, you know, you can't beat Rock with scissors. And unfortunately, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to defeat the Rock with the scissors, and the Rock is smashing the scissors into a million pieces. And that's just, I mean, that's just not what you want to do. Regardless, uh, Blue Team actually still with a little bit of a lead. I haven't seen in trouble here. Will be supported though by the Guardian, so I don't think in too much trouble, at least for the time being. Gets the block to negate a lot of the damage output. Now Fallon is a little extended here. He's got to be careful. Does have his block of his own up, keeping him alive. And the Thief now trying to peel him out there as well. Does so fairly successfully. However, the Catalyst goes in big. Actually really wants to find that kill. 
Projectile block will keep Avancine safe. Spocker in a lot of trouble here as well, actually. Red team taking very heavy pressure, and Avancine holding on for dear life. Might go to the downside. There is no Obsidian Flesh available for a few seconds. Was going to go for that. Ooh, but there's a downside on both sides. Who is going to actually die here? It's going to be a Battle of Cleave. The earlier Vapor form probably might lose, but she a really good revive response. That was very... That was intelligently played by both sides. And you used Vapor form deliberately late to basically make it so he leaves Vapor form second and then can potentially rally but there was a very strong revival response from blue and that actually countered that so both teams actually playing intelligently there playing well there it is and actually blue does end up resolving this fight in their favor yet again can they pick up a third kill i think they absolutely can actually yeah and then we have found off respawn amber just dies um nikki dies here as well nicola dies that's not ideal amber will now go over to this node contesting into souls even in death he's still <laughs> giving souls trouble giving souls nightmares and despite the fact, you know, I like this. You know, I feel like Blue Team is just winning like this that, game with with just like pure brute force, right? I, I think Red point. Team is almost uh, playing the rotation game a little bit smarter, but um, Blue is just smashing them. They just keep winning the fights over and over again. And, you know, that, that'll do it, you know, especially on a map like Kylo. That will, uh, yeah, that'll work. I think we're seeing that now. They now do have map control back again after that pretty massive fight. We've well, got to watch out for this because, again, Souls is in this horrible situation uh, where he's going to have to try and handle Ambra in this 1v1. And we've seen how that's been going so far. It's certainly not going to be easy, especially with Spock are now moving in too. And Red, they are trying to avoid these fights. They know they're having difficulty and they are now trying to dodge the fights a little bit. They're trying to use the Thief here to uh, out-rotate. They have the Thief versus their opponents not having a Thief. So that does give them the, the ability to rotate around the map a little bit better. For sure. Um, and they, you know, well, that makes sense. If they continue taking these fights, they know they aren't really going to win. Then that's probably a good way to lose the game. You know, I wouldn't recommend that. Ah, and you just gets caught there. Extends a little bit too much. Niccolo is going to go for the Signet. Should find it. Oh, oh no, I think there was a missed target. Oh no. Oh. I don't know what happened there exactly. Um, I think he tried to predict where the vapor form would end, but maybe slightly got it wrong. And ha wait, oh, burn the signet! Yeah, missed the signet. Oh, that's very unfortunate, actually. Um, it was an attempted, very cool play, but unfortunately, it backfires very hard. Despite that, they actually do still have map control because again, Amber was able to win that one v one into Souls uh, again convincingly. So uh, Amber kind of carrying this game, keeping Red Team in it, and Red Team have not lost this node. Spock kind of sacrificed himself on middle to distract the blue team a little bit, and despite some things going horribly, horribly wrong for the red team, they're holding on and they're climbing back into this game. Now the question is, can they reinforce Amber before he ends up falling? It looks like the answer to that question is yes, and. And you arrives there. Ambra continuing to contest there. Using the Earth Shield to hold on and just barely keep that node contested. Ooh! Souls! Ah, yeah. Souls is very cleverly notices that the red team left that node and neutralizing it. Keeping blue team ahead for the time being. But here comes the full fight. And this is a little bit scary, I think, for red. Because bear in mind, this is what blue team wants. Blue team wants these big fights. Uh, and when this Chronomancer arrives, that gravity well is going to be very, very scary. Both players have a downside, though. Both teams have a downside. Oh, look! That cleave! Oh, my God. Yeah, this... I, I honestly have no idea how this happened. I, I don't know what happened, guys. Seriously. Um, But EOD reduced power creep a lot. But now the power creep has just gone off the charts. The amount of damage output in PvP builds right now is just insane. There is so much DPS. He couldn't even vapor form. He got eviscerated so quickly. Couldn't even activate vapor form. Um, yeah, welcome to PvP, guys. But anyway, red team disengage semi-effectively there, I'd say. They do end up losing players, but they are able to get the map captured behind that, so not all is lost for them, that's for sure. Fallon tries to hold on there, but just gets completely bullied away from the node almost instantaneously. He's almost certainly dead. Does have static shield. Might be able to hold on just barely with that, and actually does get some good support there from Niccolo. Um, has another can leap away now with uh, Hollow Forge, maybe? So it looks like the Hollow will hold on just barely. Thief got a decount there, and Red Team really making this work here. Despite losing that fight in a pretty unfortunate way. They're still holding on. They're not dead yet. Okay. Yeah, Souls again. He's going to have nightmares about Ambra. He's just going to see 
He's just going to see someone wielding a hammer and just scream. Uh, that's pretty much what's going to happen there. Just However, like the support we'll guardian does arrive now point. and helps our souls hold on to that. And that will prompt just the thief like to leave. That. No point in bashing the into the support point. guardian. That's certainly not going to happen there. There's no way they'll kill that, especially combined with the salvation trait line. That's a bit of a meme there. Okay. And red team. What are they going to do next here? They've got to break this position here. Looks like they have successfully repelled souls. The Guardian rotated back into the fight. That allows Amber to go for this decap here. And I almost want to see them really try and force the node here. Like, they want to cap this. They need to cap this big time. The fight on middle, I don't think they're going to win it. They haven't been winning these team fights, so they've got to be very, very careful. Looks like they're really committing to trying to eliminate souls. Gravity Well from Dimash comes down, but actually it's not good enough. Amber should be able to cleave this out. There's a lot of DPS here. Weakness does get applied, though, by that Chronomancer, but it's not going to be enough. The Thief and the uh, Catalyst are able to kill us. Now, can they move on to Demolish? Demolish is actually a little bit exposed here, already a bit pressured, went for that revival and took some damage for that and does get eliminated. That's very problematic because now Demolish is going to get bled out here while Spocker uh, will wait for Amber to get there and then Spocker will rotate away. This is now big. Now, Fallon did die on middle, but it took a long time and the fight is not resolved. So this is not good for red whatsoever, actually, as red team will be able to... Sorry, not good for blue, rather. Uh, because blue team... Uh, are going to lose both of those side nodes, and they haven't really secured much on middle just yet. They will eventually get that node, but red is now in position to hold. Demolish is still bleeding out. This is a massive bleed by the red team, actually. So, so annoying, actually. Amber does need some help, though. That's the big thing here. Like will Spock be able to get here in time? Amber will, well, will have to eventually concede this node. Spock are now rotating in, but the decap has happened. They're exactly even. 426 to 426. Uh, that's the end of that. However, red team very much on the hunt here, looking for more kills. Haven't seen a lot of trouble. Does go down, say there. That is a very big kill. Losing even a single player at this stage in the game can potentially be catastrophic and more or less. And uh, more than that, of course, five points has actually put red team now completely in the lead alongside a few extra node ticks here and there. And that does mean that they will win this game on timer if it comes to it. Now, this could potentially be the final fight. And so far, Red Team, actually, they are outnumbering here. So they can probably get themselves ahead on cooldowns pretty early on. Ambra, a little bit low. But again, on that Hammer Catalyst, should be able to be quite durable and resustain somewhat effectively. Well, that Red Guardian's team, in trouble. There's the no renewed board. focus either, I believe. This is a very exposed support. That's the end of that kill. I think that should secure Red Just Team's like victory 100% now. Team All they've got to do is not feed, pretty much. And, well, I think they are certainly in a good spot to do that. Yeah, they're picking up a few more kills across the board here as well. Actually, by the looks of this, we have not, not going down so Souls and Avanzine trying to decapture middle here, but I think it is a little bit too late for that. Two minutes on the clock, but I don't think it matters. More kills stacking up for Red. And wow, what a game. Really cool game, actually. Really, really cool game, actually. Well played there by both teams. Red just barely scrabbling to victory at the end. Very back and forth, though, right? That was up in the air pretty much the entirety of the duration of the match um, with a very narrow victory towards Red team there. Wow. There it is. There it is. Big Spocker. Yes. Team with Hammer Catalyst won. True. Yeah. Hammer, Cat Hammer Catalyst is OP. <laughs> yes. Well, so hello, Emmy. Emmy HTCM Overlord. And let me tell you something, guys. You know, Dark Emmy is rising. You know, I've seen, uh, I was seeing that HTCM trending. I was getting scared. I was just watching. I was just in fear for my life, pretty much. Right, uh, it was, oh, it was tough. But anyway, here we go. Um, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, hang on. We actually have a potential comeback in this extra matchup here. Red team, 350. Oh, wait, do they have enough time? Oh, no, I don't think they can win. Well, I mean, they definitely can't now. They are extremely dead. Ah, uh, it's a shame, actually, because they were presumably making a little bit of recovery. Yeah, you can see here they were really getting back into this matchup, but unfortunately, Just only like a that. minute left is not going to give them the room they need to get back into this game. It is actually unwinnable now. Uh, blue team could AFK and just do nothing. And there is literally no way, unfortunately, for the red team to win. Unlucky. However... A hard-fought match, as you can clearly see here. Takes a capture point. They're putting in the work, trying to make it happen. It's not Lightning Rod. What is it? Is it fresh air? Um, that's actually a lie. It is Lightning Rod. Yeah. <laughs> nice name. Did you see that? Red actually exposed. Unbelievable. Point. Yeah. <laughs> 
We have Buff Untamed over here on the Nade Scrapper. Nice. Rank 11 Monk on the Chronomancer. And Mamayas on the Tempest. Impressive. Very impressive. Blue team wins. Congratulations, blue team. Well done. Is that the last game? It might be. I think it is. Oh. It is. Now, let's see if we get some spice here. Ah, uh, French cheese that she has managed to not interact with Chunzu just yet. I guess that's going to be the next round. I would imagine we'll see this team versus this team after the end of this one. Now, the question is, what are the games we should be watching now? It's a good question. What is the Krusty Krab? That's the question. That's the big question. Under the Willow Tree, what is this? Let's take a look. I don't even know what this is. I, I, yeah, I mean, what, what the hell is going on here, guys? I don't know who these people are. This is Sakaya. I do know that. You see, the problem is with PvPers is they, they quite often get banned and just have to make new accounts. Or they just make new accounts for no reason. Uh, and that's, that's kind of annoying, right? That is uh, definitely pretty annoying. Let's take a look and see what we got here. We have Grey Veils on Herald. Condi Herald, in fact. Yeah, this is a build that CMC says he wants to bring back. And, you know, I think it has a, a degree of viability to it. Um, you know, certainly, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely playable for sure. You don't see it played super commonly because, they're, honestly, there are very, very strong options that compete with it. But still, we have Sakaya on Thief. Here he is. Critical Strikes, Trickery, Big Damage. 300 ferocity. Oh my god. Holy shit. Look at all this DPS. Wow. Daredevil is back. Support Guardian. The match starts Here it is. Boom. We have Demon Chungus on Chronomancer and Wing Trade here on Spellbreaker. Well, you know, that looks pretty good. You know, there's no catalyst there. We have on the blue team. It's Chunsu, Support Guard, the Rotator, Fly. On Thief. Hold on to Running a similar set though with Critical Seize Strikes, as you can see there. Big DPS, but this time with Marauder Amulet and Rune of the Thief. Interesting actually, going for the, the big Thief roleplay, the big backstab, you know? 10% backstab damage, guys. We have Not a Melon here with Catalyst. We have Wolf Spider with another Catalyst. And Tinrog, aka Gordit, on the Harbinger. What type of harbinger is it? It is, again, the death magic build. So trying trying to survive as much as possible. I think that is going to be a little tricky uh, to hold on on this harbinger. You know, you are fairly vulnerable. And there is a support, so that will hopefully help out with that. But good luck to the Necro. I think on, you know, on this map, it, there's some good kind of potential here for the harbinger. So it's certainly doable. And there's, uh, yeah, you know, Necro's a bit slow. That could be a problem here as well. Let's we'll see how this one actually turns out. I think the Necromancer will be difficult to necessarily get a lot of value out of, I think. Because, again, there's not going to be a lot of team fighting happening. Regardless of that, though, let's see how this fight initiates. So far, red team getting a little bit of map control here. Uh, blue gearing up for a big fight here on this middle node. The Condi Herald taking a lot of pressure already. Do we have access to the Glint heal here? I don't know. We just got used, so not anymore we don't. However, you know, with uh, Condi Herald, you have a lot of defensives, right? You have Staff. You play with Shield as well. You have the Rabbit Amulet. So pretty durable build overall. Double heal skills too. So should be able to survive fairly effectively. The Red Chronomancer in a lot of trouble here. The Cleave from Blue should be good enough here. I mean, those Catalysts are just going to do so much damage. Uh, and this is where things are going to get scary, I think. Like, if you ever end up fighting, the Catalyst for Blue are going to be very hard to deal with here for the red team. If, if uh, red team red can somehow team split up point. these fights and really avoid ever having like big protracted engagements that have two to three players in them, then I think they're all right. But double catalyst, and honestly, even the necromancer, right? Throw all that together. I mean, it's, it's going to be pretty tricky to Just actually engage. Like, like red team Blue definitely team need to play the rotation point. game here. Uh, they do have a thief, but of course their opponents also have a very powerful thief in the form of Fly here as well, so that will be difficult to do. But Red's still holding their own, uh, despite uh, losing that initial fight. 
yeah, those catalysts. They're such a problem. They really, really are. Um, the Thief coming in there to continuously harass. Of course, Thief no longer has the unblockable steel, but of course you do still have Basilisk Venom. Uh, you can get some level of unblockability there and get some unblockable crowd control going through all of that stuff. Uh, regardless, because of course Swipe was unblockable, but Daredevil does not have Swipe anymore. We only have Steel. 1200 range, but not unblockable. And blue team, they have actually taken control of this game a little bit. And yeah, this is, we're, we're encountering this issue. The issue is, there's not enough damage here from red, right? They, they have a lot of um, kind of enablers, right? The Chronomancer can enable a lot of damage. It has time warp, not gravity. Well, it's pretty interesting, actually. Um, it can enable the fight a lot, you know. Uh, the Condi Rev is a pretty slow damage dealer as well. There's, there's no punch here. For red and they're really struggling to kill stuff right uh, whereas of course the blue team is is the exact opposite right they don't really have a duelist right they essentially have four damage dealers in a certain respect right i mean of course the catalyst can kind of hold their own in a 1v1 uh, but they're not they're more like a roma style build that can also do a little bit of dueling as well uh, but at the end of the day they just have so much damage right like critical uh, critical sorry, de uh, daredevil double catalyst and a necromancer it's very, very hard for Red Team to hold their own. Uh, they're doing a good job in this game of just keeping the points relatively even. And that is because the Blue Team definitely do lack a little bit of map control here. They aren't really going to have anything that can uh, hold on to points super Blue effectively. Point. Or anything that really wants to, I suppose. They, I think a lot of these players want to be super, super active. And obviously the Necromancer doesn't really want to 1v1 um, that much. It, just, it will just die the moment it gets outnumbered. Uh, pretty much can't really stand on the point. So the points remain fairly even. And I think Blue could maybe actually encounter a few difficulties when they uh, run into the both buffs being up at the same time. Bottom buff and upper buff could definitely be a little bit of a problem. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. 30 points in it so far. But I do think Red needs to think about what they're going to do here. They need to figure out some kind of strategy to deal with this. I think they are actually doing it. They're playing these fights pretty safe but another player does fall here thief gets the decap and actually will be able to fully capture this node blue team zerging very heavily all five of them on middle uh, that's probably not what they want i think they do need to actually account for what's actually going on here on the map too getting a kill or two is obviously fantastic just like that who doesn't love that who does not love a kill or two Red team wins but the capture point. yeah gotta hold the points too guys you gotta make that happen that was actually a very nice uh, cheeky decap here by Fly, which is good. And Blue Team now, of course, grabbing middle node at the same time. But the moment of reckoning is upon them. Uh, we are going to have the buffs up in one minute. I think Blue Team, they actually do fan out quite effectively from that initial Red Zerg on middle. Uh, they're able to immediately grab themselves the middle node. Not going for the full cap. It looks like the Thief might be going for the full cap on this node. Or maybe Blue Team, they're like, well, you know what? We're not going to full cap. How about we just don't do that? Hmm, actually, this Thief Sakai needs to be a little bit careful. He does not want to die. Oh, the Dragon's Tooth has latched onto him. The evasion is good. Thief now going for the capture here. Actually, I think maybe he is expecting to be jumped on by the enemy Thief here. Now goes back to go for that point. Another big team fight for me up here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this is a little bit scary here for Red because Red are now going to have to fight on Blue's node and they're probably not going to have a good time doing it. Both Catalysts are here in this main fight and that should be very advantageous for the Blue team. Again, I just don't see there being enough pressure to actually catch up to and kill these Catalysts. A lot of Condi's coming out. They're massive Condi transfer as well. Uh, but I think this actually might be a revival here by the Blue team. Yeah, Signet gets precast. There it is. Uh, Blue now do, do get repelled a little bit, so they maybe didn't quite uh, have the easiest time in the, that they would have liked in that fight, but they actually have a kill on the enemy Herald. Revival is being attempted. It might happen. I think it is. Yeah, there's not enough cleave present right there to actually get the job done on that. Tranquility now buffs appeared. are up. Red have got to be careful here. Or rather, Blue have got to be careful. Wait, is this even being contested? Oh, no. Oh? Hang on. This is maybe scary. It's going to be close. Wow. That is very unfortunate. Um, blue team forget about the bottom buff, and unfortunately CMC despawned again. Not able to make it. And it does appear that red team have found the adaptation that they need here. They are taking these fights a lot more intelligently, I think, than they were at the start of the game. Oh no, they got both buffs? 
And yeah, I do think this is a little bit of a weakness in the composition here from the blue team. They don't really have anything that can hold its own there, right? And red team just exploited that in a very extreme way. They did just lose two of their players, but the Chrono Monster maybe can get the revival. And losing both buffs there, that's, that might even be a death sentence in this game, to be honest. That's so many. Look at that steep line. Wow, ouch. Um, that, almost forming a bit of a cross on the, uh, on the score history there. Now, red team do kind of get destroyed there. They get caught on that bottom buff. They may be overcommitting to some of those revives and lose three of their players. That's certainly not where you want to be. That's not ideal. But they now have got themselves a very sizable 100-point advantage. Just like that, blue team takes a capture point. That is a big one. Okay, okay. Now, what will blue's response be? 100 points is a big deal. You might Blue think, hmm. The capture point. You might go, hmm. Hmm. This looks recoverable, but 100 points in a game like this is very, very difficult. Red team's composition will allow them to stall this game highly effectively, right? They're able to run around decapping, being annoying, slowing down these fights. That's a big gap to make up here for Red, and Red are going to have difficulty here because they don't really have that duelist. They don't have something that can really hold its own in the 1v1, which is not ideal for them, right? You don't want to be playing from behind if you aren't able to hold on to that? stuff. Red team and yeah, Red even actually have the double cap now, and all of a sudden, this is looking very, very scary here for the blue team. Six minutes left, but it's a double cap, only a single cap now. Neutralization comes through, but Wing Trade actually does hunt down one of these catalysts, gets the kill. Well done to Wing Trade there, impressive. A blue team now in trouble. That con the Herald actually ripping through the Guardian. There it is, the 19 Torment stacks. Looks like that might actually get revived. That, that what a disgusting res. How do <laughs> red team got a capture? Point. I think red team just forgot that that was happening. They were like, oh yeah, there's someone reviving there. Do you think we should stop it? Like, oh, oh no, they already revived them. I guess we can't anymore. Whoops. So that was a bit of a mistake, wasn't it? Uh, but anyway, red team now completely dominating this game. Up to 400 points. I think the writing's a bit on the wall here. Uh, very hard to win now uh, for Blue. There's maybe some potential here with the bottom buff again, maybe. Maybe if Blue can steal that, but this is not looking good whatsoever. Red have map control right now. The Thieves are actually tied up fighting each other, and the Thief manages to find the decap as well. Sakaya does a good job there. Of course, uh, the attacking Thief has the advantage because, of course, you decap faster than you recap. So, in other words, Stealth will auto-decide the decap, essentially. Like, nodes with two Thieves on end up neutral, pretty much. That's the way that ends up going. And Sakai even doing a very good job in that 1v1, forcing Fly away, actually. So, good job here by Red Thief to hold on there. Chronomancer dies, but at this stage, Red Team are kind of in die on node mode, right? All they need to do is just not feed, and they'll probably win this game. Just play it slow, stand on the point, be annoying, slow the game down, and this is over very, very soon. They're doing exactly that. Yeah, they're, they're playing this well. I think they, the Red Team really had a bit of a rocky start here, but they've certainly established what their win condition is, and they're just playing their win condition now. They know what they've got to do. They've just got to be annoying. They've got to be gnats, little, little flies buzzing around, being irritated irritating and they've done that extremely successfully here as you can see and they're going to win this game red team very well played very well played to them actually um having difficulty but they have overcome the catalysts the catalysts have been shut down catalyst is terrible look the zero catalyst team wins it's over guys catalyst is over wait how is this how is this game so slow what that's crazy let's get into it wow what a slow game look at this that's crazy. Oh no, there were, oh, we appeared. had a DC? From uh, Inoki here. That's crazy. Dude, look at this. It's 10 minutes and there's only 278 points. Actually wild. Here we are at the bottom buff though. Spellbreaker from red team already in the down state. Thief is now back. We'll be grabbing this altar real quick. But blue team, they're looking to grab this buff here. And of course the Spellbreaker will be able to continuously interrupt that, which is very, very funny actually. Can Red Team get another inter I believe they can. Yeah, we have another Catalyst Red from Red. Should be able to permit interrupt that. Yeah, it's doing exactly that. Gets the interrupt. The Warrior even vengeances to keep this Red going as slowly as possible. Red get the cap in. Yeah, I think Blue have made a classic mistake. Blue with the classic mistake to heavily focus on this buff. And I don't think that's actually what you want to do in this situation. They've committed to it very, very heavily. And as a result of that, completely lost the map, unfortunately. 
And red team now with the double cap. Even, we're well, not looking for the triple, actually. It's going to be the Chronomans that will pick up this node here. Blue team. And, blue team. and now red recommitting with a fiery vengeance for this buff here. Ooh, that does get revival there. So we should see this fight go in favor of red, I believe. They have the downside on the enemy support Tempest. And red should be able to clean this up relatively effectively. Now, red need to be careful not to overcommit and make the same mistake that their opponents made here, of course. I think they should be able to clean this up pretty quickly. This uh, Soul Beast is not going to survive for very long, I don't think. There we go. There's the CC into the Dragon's Tooth. Ooh, ow. Yep, yeah, that is a little bit painful. Should be able to kill that very quickly. There's the kill and red. Now, oh, actually, they, wait. Oh, they actually got the bottom buff. The, the, they did not get the interrupt. Nice. I like that. There was no interrupt. Red team gets the triple cap. They're actually holding this too as well. Blue will be able to get the altar, but we actually have the spell breaker into the Chronomancer over here. Thief will come in to reinforce that too. Down slash. Big boss coming. Good name. Impressive. Very, very impressive, guys. We love to see it. Down slash. Goes for the kill. Finds the kill. The heart seeker seeks the heart of the Chronomancer and gets the job done. Impressive. And yes, you can have the thick nameplates in game. Blue this has been. It's been in the game for uh, a few years now, I think, actually. Yeah. It's actually pretty funny. Um, the story of the thick health bars. Thick health bars got added. Um, there was a lot of community desire for this. And there was an add on called BGDM that basically did this. It allowed you to have thick health bars everywhere in the game. It gave you just basically like simulated health bars. Um, and people liked it so much uh, that ANET said, you know what? We're just going to add it into the game. And we're also going to make it so that you don't use BGDM. Because BGDM was, uh, you know, was, was pushing the boundaries a little bit too far, guys. Uh, it really was. It really was, guys. But anyway, there it is. 466 points. And red team are going to bring this one home. Pretty close game, actually. Wow, that was a that must have been pretty tense. You can see here that red just stalled, right? Like here, they got to about here, just plateaued for a good chunk of time while blue team slowly caught up. It's always very tense, I think, in PvP when that happens. It's always a little bit stressful when you run yourself into a situation like, like oh no, we're going to throw, we're going to throw. But red team rallied themselves. They didn't throw. They anti-threw. They successfully won. Well played. Ah, they did have this DC as well. That is true, actually. I think, yeah, maybe Anaki, he DC'd or maybe got stuck in a rock. Who knows? But there it is. Well done to Red. Job done. Next round. What's it going to be? What's it going to be, guys? I don't know. Why the French? Ah, it's going to be the French versus the team. Under the Willow Tree team. That's probably the one we want to watch. Let's see the French at their full power. Let's take a look. Because, of course, I actually thought the Chunsu team would do very well. But, in fact, Under the Willow Tree did extremely well. Can they challenge the French, guys? Can they do it? Could it happen? We're about to find out. Throw POV, Gladge. Wow. Boyce enjoys watching people throw. You heard it here first. You heard it here first, guys. All right, let me in. Let me in, please. It's going to be Forest for the next map. Spicy. Very spicy. Very exciting. Very exciting. Splish. Splash. Sploosh. Spectre from Maya. Maya, definitely a Spectre enjoyer, I would say. Ah, dude, I see this guy all the time in Ranked. Dude, Revy Boom Blaster. <laughs> ah, ah, yes. Very good. Condi Mech. This build actually memes people. If they don't see it coming... The they get memed soon. hard. They get memed very hard. You gotta watch out for the Condi Mac guys. You do. Let's get in there. Yeah. Throw mine. 
Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. So this could be a spicy one. So let's see what the French go with it. They are going with the set, the Chronomancer. And yeah, in some ways, I'm actually not that surprised to see Chrono actually emerge here. Like it was certainly one of those builds that was just getting bullied basically because of how unbelievably oppressive um, Spellbreaker and Catalyst were in the meta. It was like, oh, well, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry. You just don't fit. You know, I'm afraid we've got to get five catalysts on our team, and that leaves, uh, oh yeah, zero uh, zero spaces for literally anything else. So, unlucky about that. But yeah, this is actually a build that was hovering out there, and is now actually got into the meta. I mean, Untamed. I mean, Untamed, it's, uh, it's gone. You know, Untamed actually got deleted by a single quarter second cast time. That does slightly amuse me, actually. It's, uh, it's pretty funny if you think about that. But anyway, it is going to be Draza going with the Critical Strikes Thief. It's going to be Ultra Mobility, too, with the Shadow Portal. So really going to lean into Omega Rotation here, being everywhere at once the match with the Shadow soon. Trap. Zealith on the Tempest. No surprises there. Tempest still, of course, just, you know, the premier support. Uh, in all of these situations, incredible healing, incredible mitigation, projectile block, shocking aura, great boon application, great sustained healing, all the good stuff. Chronomon's there from kill. This is condition build here, very durable, very tanky, but also has that presence with that gravity well. You know, this is a powerful ability. You've got to watch out for that in the team fight. Even throws out a good chunk of healing and uh, mitigation with the Aegis, of course, and well of eternity. And then, no surprises here, it is going to be the double catalyst coming out from a spree. And Riken. And here we go. Three node push. Not a surprise whatsoever. Uh, this is something that I expect from the French, as I expect from, honestly, most high level teams, is to go for the three node play immediately, particularly that you have this ultra mobile Daredevil. Uh, will allow uh, rotation to happen there, and that should enable the, you know, a, a lot of map control coming out from this situation. But they are going up against, of course, another thief on the enemy team, Sakaya, and indeed a very formidable team of gamers so far. Looks like so far the French are going to be a little bit careful here. Not going to commit too much to this far node. Esprit now moving in there to make this a bit of a 2v2 of both of those catalysts with the Chronomancer and the Tempest holding firm here in the middle. Zeal is actually in a bit of trouble though. Takes the Shadow Portal. Does actually end up dying. Oh, Red Team don't notice it though. Yeah, they don't notice it in time, unfortunately. Very nice reactions and responses here from the blue team. Getting that revival on the Tempest. Very good recovery there using that Shadow Portal. Bear in mind, gamers, not only the Thief can use the Shadow Portal. You can actually allow one of your allies to go through instead of you if you so desire. This is a very common thing to do. Even with Element, you can take it in Vapor Form, right? You can Vapor Form and Downsight and then boom, take the Portal too. It's a pretty uh, good piece of tech, actually, for you to be aware of if you're playing with a Thief or as a Thief, of course. However, if anything, Red Team did kind of win that initial engagement there. They were able to kind of defuse the Blue Team here and scare them away somewhat effectively. And they now get themselves this node over here. They get the mine and Spellbreaker. It has been nerfed, but make no mistake, it is still a monster in these 1v1s. This is, of course, the defense Spellbreaker build coming through from Toby here, as you can see there. And this build actually is very nice against the Catalyst as well, of course. Uh, the Resistance here from Resilient Roll essentially gives very good blind mitigation, which is essentially how an Elementalist might deal with a Warrior, because Warrior is very vulnerable to blind, and Sept has a lot of blind. But if you have that Resistance uptime uh, from the Dodge Roll, you are immune to blind. And that means that a very key defensive tool that an Elementalist might have against you in, say, a 1v1 scenario is essentially completely nullified. That, alongside a lot of condition removal with Cleansing Ire, means that it's going to be quite difficult for these Elementalists to actually shut down this warrior despite the reduced sustain. And believe me, it still brings some serious pain to the table, right? Uh, they nerfed the F1 on the dagger by something like 45%. Uh, it was for a good reason. Because uh, this ability absolutely obliterates you. Uh, <laughs> if it gets a crit, it really hurts. Did you see that? Seriously, the defense trait line is such a... Look at this, guys. Look at this scam of a trait line. It just gives you more damage. Look at that. 7% more damage, guys. It's unbelievable. Actual scam. <laughs> so what strength? Another 10%. You don't run it on this build, though. So, you, you know... That's the hammer build. You go for the hammer there, guys. For Merciless Hammer and Stalwart Strength. But this is not the hammer build. This is the Great Sword build. And actually, Red Team looking good here. The Age of the Catalyst is over. Con the Herald is confirmed OP. I love to see it. I do like to see a little bit of a shakeup in the metagame, guys. And we're kind of seeing that now. Uh, you know, I have to say, I underestimate the Con the Herald. You know, I wasn't a huge fan of it. But it appears to be doing work here. It does get massively focused, though. 
And that's the problem. It is a bit of a slow build. That's why. Well, I don't know. Why do I even make these calls? I'm like, ah, con the Aaron guys. Oh, ooh. Dies instantly. Uh, and yeah, that is a very good example of the weaknesses that it has. It is quite a slow, immobile build. And in this meta, you do need to be able to kite pretty effectively. You need to be fast. Otherwise, you're going to get hunted down and deleted pretty much. Blue team uh, by very, very powerful, uh, very powerful roaming builds, which is exactly what you see with the uh, the Catalyst, of course. But there you go. Oh, Drowsy just wins the 1v1 as well into the uh, the warrior here. And, yeah, that's something people often forget about Daredevil. Like, Daredevil is an absolute beast in these 1v1 scenarios. It's very, very strong uh, because most things simply can't really land a hit on it. It's just too evasive. It's too mobile. Very hard to handle, uh, even as a warrior, right? A warrior very good in 1v1, but the thief able to outmaneuver it and just be a little bit too fast, a little bit too spooky and too speedy for that to really catch up. And blue team, can I get back in control a little bit of this game? It's one node apiece so far. Red team trying to recombobulate themselves, coming back off respawn. Herald now back in look. Now he's now the Herald's going to carry, guys. Okay. You see? Yeah. Now the Herald's going to carry, but all oh, those Catalysts just ascend. And uh, Red Team getting a little bit spread out here, and the support Guardian just gets completely shut down uh, in a moment there. Double Catalyst just target fire it, and, well, it's very hard to survive, especially for a Guardian. I, uh, I think that um, Tempest fares a little bit better in situations like this, because Tempest has a lot of... Um, active mitigation, right? It can use the Earth Shield, right? You can use Obsidian Flash, all that kind of stuff. Guardian is a lot more... Uh, it, it's a lot more like it just kind of eats the damage and heals it, right? It just tries to survive, pretty much. You're just like, you know... <laughs> I'm gonna just use all of my cooldowns and hopefully you're dead by the time I don't have any left. Whereas Tempest is a little bit better at weathering the storm against other Elementalists, of course, funnily enough. Uh, Guardian, I think, very vulnerable to the, the, the Catalysts on the blue team here. Anyway, the match continues. Not a done deal by any stretch of the imagination. It's a 50-point advantage for blue, and that means red. I think they're definitely thinking they want to get something done pretty soon. Uh, Draza in trouble here. Could this be a kill? Ooh, Sakaya nearly finds the no-scope. Doesn't get it. Not quite anyway. Looks like Draza might be able to get away just barely. Yep. He's able to escape. I don't think Sakai can realistically catch that. I don't think no. Just goes for the node instead. Very sensible, of course, uh, from the opponent. Zeal does go down. Say, is there a glyph available? No, because he is the glyph, of course. He is the Tempest. Ooh, that Guardian goes down. But this should be a rally, I think. Yep, there we go. Guardian back up on their feet. No problemo. Esprit and Raikon are going to have to leave now. They can't really uh, go head-to-head -head with this anymore. Thief Duel continues over here. Just a straight up 1v1. Could take a while to resolve. Of course, there's a lot of stealth on both sides. A lot of evasion will be somewhat difficult for either of them to really get such a decisive advantage they're able to actually just uh, flat out get a kill. Oh, here we go. That? Oh, that was so close. That was unbelievably close. The Shadow Step there, I believe, was used to just barely evade that by Draza. If that Heart Seeker had landed, that could have been very spooky, actually, uh, for the Blue Thief. But some split-second reaction saves the day there. Wing trade does go down to over here. The Catalyst coming for the bully, and that leaves the support guardian uh, a little bit uh, out of position here. Tries to get over here in time. Might be able to get that signet. Does get the Chrono Monster back up. Can the Chrono hold uh, until the warrior comes back? I think the answer is yes. Does get the double well of eternity. Well's going down like crazy. Has access to stealth and time warp, so I think can hold. Yes, the warrior gets back in play. That's where we want to be. But blue has just got that map control right now. The thief from red does leave. Actually, Draza would able to can get control of that node. Is going to go back, but I think it's been predicted. Yes, it has. There we go. Draza already knows it and is actually in position to already defend this. Ooh, heal skill into it. That's a little bit scary. That's going to have, that's going to force Sakaya away almost immediately, actually. Red yeah, no hide in shadows. Has to back it up there a little bit. Doesn't really want to fight there. Wants to get something done elsewhere. But so far, very intense game, actually. Both teams definitely pushing each other a little bit here. There's uh, certainly some hope, I think. Uh, for our red team. You know, red team are certainly competitive. They're looking competitive, actually, in this game. It's not looking like a meme just yet, but certainly Team France looking a little bit stronger uh, so far. Definitely having a significant advantage, now doubling the points of their opponents and slowly creeping ahead in this game. Demon Chungus. Team grabbed a capture point. I'm very interested about this time warp, right? Going with the time warp with the super speed. I guess the slow and the chill. Uh, I guess, is being heavily valued here by these players to so really um, snare the opponents in these big team fights with a 360 range snare. Gravity Well often is kind of a, a very powerful, hard-hitting 
a fight to secure kills and so on, but the time warp. Also highly annoying, cause chill and slow, a serious pain in PvP. Ooh, that Guardian does have renewed focus. Needs a teleport here. Gets in. Oh, and it is actually held quite nicely. Kill and Zealoth down too, actually. Double kill and the support Guardian survives, but here's the problem. Red, don't have any points. Red team wins a capture point. That's the problem. They need some capture points. And they need them now. They need them now, gamers. They really, really do. Alright, then here we go. Can red recover? Hmm, yeah. I don't think so. And this is the problem here. Uh, a team like Blue Team, they're very experienced. They, they know how to lose. Understanding how to lose is very important in PvP. They lost those fights, but they didn't really lose that much. And they're already trying to slow down the progress of their opponents. And they've actually succeeded in doing so. Uh, this node's already been neutralized in this 2v2. With the Warrior and the Thief versus the Catalyst and the Thief. And in fact, this 2v2 is honestly not looking that great for Red. You can see that the health bar is certainly favorable towards the blue team here. And they're really hunting for that kill. They want to see if they can eliminate that Thief or that Warrior as quick as they can. Regardless of that, though, blue team maintaining that lead. Chronomance are very, very low on middle. Does have a lot of wells to go down here as well. That should be some good healing. Aegis is available like too. And blue blue not looking super away. healthy either. And Zeal does go down state again. The revival, is it going to be good enough? I think it is. It is. Yeah, good revival there. The Herald not able to get any kind of burst or maybe any kind of crowd control. However, the Condies, are they going to be enough to generate another down state? Let's see if that is the case. I don't think so. But unfortunately, yeah, the 2v2 did collapse. Red team loses the 2v2. Sakai has to try and find something on the map. Might go for Zealith here. I think that's probably going to be the play here. Yeah, Obsidian... Earth Shield was just used, but there's still Obsidian Flesh left over. Oh, that's going to be a bit of a cock block here. Uh, against the Tempest. The Tempest should be basically just fine. It will be able to get a Water Overload off soon if needed. Or just to wash the pain away. Herald really going for this kill. And actually a lot of condition pressure here. <laughs> Lots of damage coming out there. Might even generate a downside. They really were hunting for that kill, but... Again, kills are good, but when you chase a player for like two minutes to do it, and you don't really get any nodes for it, is it really enough? Is it really enough, guys? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's enough. And in fact, it isn't. I think I'm very excited to see the rematch, though, actually. Um, red team did a good job here early on. They really did. They really did. But I think they need to find a little bit more. I think the experience of Blue Team, the expertise in rotation of the French, was certainly incredibly powerful here. Very, very powerful indeed. And that's what you are going up against. Like, what you know, I, I mean, look, we all want to see fresh teams take victories in these monthly tournaments. We all want to see that. Did you see that? Uh, but got a capture point. I'm going to... Let's talk about the elephant in the room here, guys. Do you want to talk about the elephant in the room? Nobody will win until a team sticks together and plays together for more than one month. Yeah. That, my friends, is the cold, hard reality of the situation. Because otherwise, that French synergy, that French camaraderie, it will pull them through pretty much every time. Because they have the synergy, they've got the practice, they know how to communicate with each other. Um, they practice, they know their play style, all that kind of stuff. And as long as they have that, that's an advantage that no other team outside of Team USA, of course, actually has in the entire world. Maybe Ultranum. Ultranum probably could, I think. Um, Ultram could challenge this team, but Ultram are, are not... I don't think they're super motivated to play the game. Fly players, of course, Gornet's playing. But they don't have their full roster um, currently in the game. That's point. definitely a legendary team of gamers who are, like, big on the stuff. They're all over the place. Um, but unfortunately, no other team can match the French in terms of friendship, guys. The power of friendship. Carrying them. To monthly AT victory. Very nice. I don't understand why all the more experienced good players gather themselves all in one team to try hard every month. 
Well, I mean, why wouldn't they do that? Wait, 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 you don't understand why all the good players play with each other. We actually have a DC situation. We have a logout from the red team. Unfortunate stuff. I mean, yeah, the, the reason why people play together is because they are friends. And they enjoy playing with each other. <laughs> That's why. And they also like winning as well. <laughs> Their goal is to win, guys. Yeah, very much like the Maguma server, actually. It is to be boring stomping all the teams. To be honest, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you something. In the, it, I think the competitive mindset is quite rare. It's quite rare. Um, so I understand why people don't get this, but no, winning is never boring. Actually. Players at high elo are rarely friends. That is absolutely not true, actually. That's really, really untrue. Uh, players in competitive gaming, um, they'll know each other and very often be friends, even if they aren't on the same team. Even if it's a 1v1 game, right? Like, even if it's a game like StarCraft or Smash um, or something like that, so there's no team element to it whatsoever, even then, um, top players will be friends and they'll know each other. Uh, th this is absolutely not true. This is true in real life sports as well. Uh, a lot of top athletes will know each other and be friends. Yeah. I think it's always more fun to win an intense game, but I think that well, winning is always going to be more fun than losing, right? Um, that's just the reality of it. Uh, if you're a competitive player, you want to win first and foremost. Right, um, good games are obviously better, and I think that you can have boring, um, boring victories. But there's, I'll take a boring victory over a loss any day. Hold on to your and points. I think any competitive player would say the same. Hell yeah! Let's do this. W only. True. Did you see that? Okay. Yeah, uh, this one is an interesting game. Blue has good players. I think they're going to have difficulty versus the French. They actually do manage to immediately kill Raiken. That's big. There's a lot of DPS here. There's a lot of damage. With the Catalysts, Hollis, and the Thief. There's a lot of DPS here. We actually already have the double cut. Look at that gravity wall! Look at that gravity wall! That's insane. Huge gravity wall there, guys. That was wild. Coming out there from kill. Crazy. But it wasn't enough to actually get anything done. Very interesting though, actually. Despite um, Red Team actually losing some of these fights, actually losing the fight, the way, um, the, how aggressive Red Team has been with their rotations, they've actually got map control anyway. I like that. That's pretty funny, actually. It's not enough. It's simply not enough, gamers. Red team are just unstoppable, guys. They're machines. They're beat. What is, what is this copy pasta? I'm a solo player. In before, this is an MMO. You need to see more of the world if you think that MMOs don't have solo players. And it's not like I don't play with others at all. I just enjoy exploring the world on my own. Listening to the in-game music, playing in the back and stuff. If the raids will be 10 players, not guild, then I'm okay with it. Otherwise, I guess it's going to be time to find random guild and start the pretend game. I don't even know what that means, to be honest. Yeah, I like how red team is actually feeding, but they're winning anyway. Like, this is a, you know, what's really funny about this is that in some ways this is classic Guild Wars 2 PvP. I actually think this is one of the things that um, people don't like that much about Guild Wars 2 PvP, is that you can win the fights and still lose the game. It's very interesting, actually. Um, I, I think that's why that uh, quite a lot of people maybe want Team Deathmatch, is because winning the fights isn't actually good enough in Conquest. You have to understand how to win the map. And that actually does, can involve sometimes losing fights, uh, or at least understanding how to lose a fight in a graceful way. Installed. 
Yeah, it's all about the macro. It absolutely is. Conquest. Let's go ahead and go to another game, though. This is going to be fairly straightforward, I think. Let's see what we've got. Are there any noticeable games? I think this one could be interesting. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. <laughs> All right. Yeah, hey, real GCB. Thanks for the Prime. I appreciate that. But anyway, let's get into this game. So, what have we got here? We actually have, ah, Condi Herald coming out here. We've started a trend from Digital, aka Iona here. We have Maya, Chronomancer, Stranger, or the Daredevil. Xeon on another Chronomancer. And Andreas, aka Splish, Splash, Sploosh. <laughs> Representing on the Tempest. Did you see also, that? Fungus member, guys. Fungus member. You love to see it. Ready for targeting you really, really do. But anyway, Red Team currently uh, up on points. Up on caps, rather, but down on the points. How'd the first part of this game go? Yeah, it looks like, oh, well, I guess, you know, it, it was a pretty standard opening here. A few kills on either side, blue getting a few kill pickups. And now red, kind of inverting the situation, grabbing themselves some nodes in. Maya is down there, just a little that? bit spooky. Red team got a capture point. But I almost feel as if blue team, they're encountering somewhat similar difficulties as they had previously, where they're having a bit of trouble controlling the map. They don't really have the ability to hold very well. Just like that. Let's see if they Blue can actually manage to win this game regardless of that. Big Blue team fight brewing up on the hammer, as it usually does. If the Necromancer is able to get in here, that's going to be very, very nice. The question is, will that even be enabled? Looks like that is going to be the case. So now Gornet does arrive. Karot Boon. Yeah, this is a very scary ability now, by the way, guys. Look at that. Five boons corrupted on a 30-second corner. And it's lost its second charge. But five boons, unblockable at 1200 range. Definitely a pretty scary thing. A lot of pressure coming through in this team fight. Now that time warp a little bit oppressive as well coming through. But there is actually a kill on the Chronomancer. Let's see, will this be enough? I think the CC and damage should be good enough to actually get that full cleave out there onto Maya. Yeah, it absolutely is. Thief not able to deal with the Harbinger for now anyway. Gordon moving out on the map. Let's get this happening. Hello, uh, wait. Helio died 1v1 to Svanir on NA. Wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> What do you mean? I, what, what are you talking about? I'm not even sure if I believe that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, look. Svanir is a powerful enemy. You know, Svanir does a lot of damage. You've got to watch out. Wait, what is it? I mean, let's take a look at this. We've got this uh, clip here. We are, okay. It, it, wait, is this like a clean 1v1? Okay, so we have this happening. The bear lands a hit. Oh no! Oh my! G yeah, that is at, that is straight up a clean one v one. Does he get the rally though? Wait, he he doesn't get the rally. Yeah, that is. Oh, the bear is on six percent, and the bear just ends him. And that is the end of that, guys. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, underestimate the bear at your peril, guys. Underestimate Svanir. At your own risk. That's unfortunate stuff. Uh, <laughs> Never mind that, though. We have a very, uh, very strong, very strong match going in the background here. We've got the 1v1. The 5v5, in fact. Not the 1v1. The bear was the 1v1. Fear me. All right, then. Here we go. So let's make it happen. Zeon in the downstate, but Red Team really clinging on. Again, using the map somewhat effectively to hold on in this game, but ah, Maya down as well. Two kills? That's not good. Have Red Team got any kills? Not really. I mean, that's probably bad. That's probably not good. They've got to find a way to break through. They've got to get something here. It's the only way. The only way. Although I guess the other way. Ooh! The other way is Blue not that. Uh, that was a big no-scope there by Fly, but unfortunately it's not going to make it like into that. his montage Blue because sadly the red point. team arrived. 
This is why people like World vs. World, because that can't happen. When you montage someone, um, usually there's no one around to revive them. In PvP, you can montage someone, uh, but unlucky. Their team just revives them, and your clip is ruined, and you can't, um, you can't say how you dominated them 1v1. Bit unfortunate there. Big team fight kind of brewing up here. It's probably good news here for the blue team. Especially as red is incredibly pressured already. Temp is very, very low. Just going to die on node. Uh, this might actually be where the game really gets a bit out of control against red here. Blue are all here. Uh, red kind of fighting into that, which is certainly not what they want to do. I mean, doubled Catalyst and uh, Harbinger. There's no way that they can really engage that with what they have. Double Chronomancer and a Herald. No way. Especially when they were already in such a dire situation regarding cooldowns anyway. Big Condi transfer from the Herald, but it's not going to be enough, I don't think. That is... The oh, hang on. The Rotator does die, but I don't think it's actually enough. Oh, wait. Oh, what's even going on here? Zeon actually got revived. That's something, I guess. And actually, maybe a rally. No, the rally is not going to happen. The Rotator rallies first. Let's go down set again, but I believe there should be enough revival here. Oh, actually, the Time Warp is pretty nasty, actually. It's going to be a little bit irritating for sure, but actually, no. I think that revive will enable in just a moment, maybe? But either way, uh, in some sense, all of this stuff isn't that important because I don't really see much potential for red to really get anything done. Uh, we, of course, have one player down now, but blue is a pretty sizable lead. They have a sizable lead. Blue might be able to grab point A as well over here at the same time. And there it is. Blue and there it is. Yeah. Who is the Red Tempest? It is Andreas. Is the Red Tempest. Splish, Splash, Sploosh is in fact the correct name. Here we go. Boom. One more team fight, maybe. One more fight. Last chance for Red, I think. If they can win this, then they've definitely got a little bit of a way back into this game, but. If they lose, they will probably lose the game immediately. And yeah, that's probably not what they want to do. I'd imagine that's not on their agenda currently. Let's see if they can make it happen. Uh, they're just struggling a little bit with damage here. Like they need this. The Herald is here. And the Herald can certainly melt things over time. It just is a very, very endless source of pressure. But it's a little bit too slow. As you can see, the damage output from Blue is very, very high. It already eliminates the Tempest. And with that, I believe the hopes of red team in this game have died. This is a game. It's certainly one of the games of all time. That's certainly true. Bit of a slow one. A bit of a relaxing game here. Zeon going to go back in to try and hold on. Gets the continuum shift, but dies immediately. Unlucky. Uh, <laughs> or honestly, PvP is pretty funny sometimes. Yeah, I, I That was quite amusing to me. It's like trying a valiant effort to hold onto the sky, but wait, is that going to get revived? Did oh, look that? at this. Red the revive actually control. activates into the immediate time warp, gets dropped down. Look at all these bubbles everywhere, and red turn the fight. Hang on. And that, it was a big brain move. The absolute galaxy brain push there from Xeon, knowing that the revive was enabled. There's the sky hammer. Now the question is, can they actually get any notes? Kill on Gornet would be huge. But actually, it's going to be a kill on Stranger. Stranger going for that kill big time. Unfortunately, not able to find it. Gets stomped out there. And oh no! Maya tempting the revive has died as well. This is a bit of a clown fiesta game. I, I, feel, I feel like... Um, it, I really do get the impression with the way things are playing out that uh, people are not as try-hard as they used to be. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I mean? <laughs> Just like that. Blue team point. I find this is, you know, like, um, you know, monthly AT fun edition, right? It's, it's, I, I think everyone's a bit relaxed. Everyone's just having a good time. Just memeing, kind of gaming, just blasting some PvP matches out with the gang once a month, right? Uh, I think everyone's chilling, right? Uh... <laughs> Yep. Team got a capture point. I think everyone's just playing for fun. It's the for fun monthly AT, guys. It's for fun. Yeah. 
<laughs> but anyway, looks like Blue are going to more or less kind of clean this up. They now have the double cap. We have some more kills coming through. There goes the Herald at the end of their day. That's that. Job done. Caught it in a little bit of trouble here. Oh, I was really hoping that was going to be a falling damage death, but it's not. Stranger going for that kill big time. I don't actually get it, to be fair. Gornet does not have the heal skill for a while. Yep, does find the kill. I think Fly might be able to get the res, though. Or at least, potentially. So look at those Daredevil auto attacks. Actually, very, very weak. Oh, the fear! Oh, the fear from the Devil State Necromancer actually gets the kill. That is just big. It's now a full Clown Fiesta over here. I think it it's not going to be good. Oh, oh, the Distort. Yep, there it is. The big... Red team Memes the there, denying that fear, gets the job done. Gets a shatter for the stability, I believe, actually. Yeah, that's what it was. The stability shatter, denying that fear, getting the stomp. Little bit of recovery action. I mean, there's two minutes on the clock, so in theory, if we do see a triple cap come through from red, they can win. Uh, however, they are getting neutralized. And that forces the red thief to go and counteract the blue thief. They're also losing middle at the same time to the Necromancer who came off respawn. So it's not going to be enough. That's the end of that. That is the end of that. Game over. Game over. We just wait for it to end now. Meyer's dead. Red team wins Everyone's dead. Harold is doing something over here. Pressing some buttons into the catalyst. Buttons are being pressed. They are being activated right the hell now. Loads of abilities flying wildly. Red team with the cap. But unfortunately, they're probably very familiar with this. They know how numbers work. They know you can only get 90 points a minute in Conquest. And that means that even if blue team literally feed an AFK, they still win. Incredible. Incredible stuff. Revert untamed and spellbreaker nerfs. Wow. Floody, I mean, honestly, I think at this point we should give in to the Catalyst. Although, you know, let, let me actually say something here. Um, this is worth noting. This is actually is, is worth noting. In a way, I'm not convinced that we know what the meta is right now. Because I don't think anyone actually cares enough to figure it out. I feel like I shouldn't say this on a PvP stream, like but... That. I, I think I should, because I, I do want to kind of di give a bit of a disclaimer here, right? I, I don't think anyone knows what's actually good, uh, or optimal at least, right? Because I don't think people are putting in enough effort to actually do it. <laughs> Game over. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, Fresh Air Catalyst, not that much fun. Certainly true. GG and GL. Look how PMA everyone is, guys. We're so well mannered here in the Guild Wars 2 community. Yes. You know, no joke, guys. I agree with Goku. We need ultimate French strats back. Do you guys remember when the French played Triple Renegade for the first time? Everyone was like, what the fuck? <laughs> it was content, guys. The triple celestial renegade was insane. It was entertainment. Probably horrible for the game and definitely not that much fun. But it was content. Okay. So, let's see. The top eight have now been locked in. We have French Cheese, Udini, Mamaya's Nika Nika Ni. Under the Willow Tree, Chocolate, Chunsu, and Simsouls. Incredible. All right. So, let's kind of make some predictions here. This is going to be, yeah. I mean, French cheese, obviously, very, very powerful. This team is almost certainly going to the finals. 
There's almost no question about that. I think the um, the bottom half of the bracket here could actually be the exciting one. Uh, I think that a match between Under the Willow Tree and the Chunsu team is going to be good. Because I think that this will be... Under the Willow Tree will be very favored against Chocolate. Uh, Chunsu probably significantly favored against Souls. But definitely worth a watch, I think. I actually haven't seen the Udini team. So I'm going to kind of get in there, maybe. And actually see uh, what players they have. If they can maybe contest here. Mamayas versus Nico Nico Nia. I think that could also be a good match too. So there's some decent matches here I think. In this round. Could be some decent ones. <sighs> Chunsu game. Yeah, oh yeah, it's this team, okay, yeah. It is this team. Yeah. I bet all my life savings in Frenchies to win. <laughs> yeah, this should be very favored towards uh, French cheese. Let's take a look at the next one. Is Berserker good in mid-high tier PvP? No. I think Berserker. I, I think Berserker is actual trash. Um, <laughs> even though it definitely got buffed pretty heavily, so it's not enough. Red team wins okay. a capture point. Let's take a look at this game, guys. Let's just let's Blue take a look. Team grabbed a capture point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trans I mean, Trans I'm going to keep it on multiple of these games. Okay. Listen. Let Let me cook. Okay. Just let me cook. I think there are multiple games that could be exciting. Could be exciting matchups. Let's take a look. Yeah. <laughs> yes, here we go. So, look, I told you. Look, this is an amazing game. They're one point apart. What, what, do, you, what do you want, guys? It's as close as it can be. As close as it could possibly be. Insane. What is uh, what is happening here? Uh, I don't even know, guys. Like, there's some PvP. We've got fighting going on here. There's action. Excitement. I feel excited right now. They're fighting. There's fresh air catalysts. They're using all of their abilities a lot. They're just spamming like lunatics. Um, next, the thief is trying to do something. Ghost Walker, go. Oh, no. Oh, well, well. I mean, okay. That didn't really work out, did it? Fortunately, Spocker, dead. Ambra, dead. Signet comes through. Interrupted though. Wow. On point with these interrupts, guys. Now Niccolo's basically dead as well. Uses his invulnerability. This is not looking good. And you in trouble. Has the obsidian flesh. Might be able to wriggle away, but blue team decisively crush their opponents. Goodness me. Obliterating the red team. Oh, they might even get another killer. Yeah, it looks like this Catalyst isn't getting out of this one. Catalyst goes down right as Spocker arrives. Very unfortunate. Maybe there's some kind of weird Shadow Portal shenanigans, but I do not believe Spocker even has it, actually. Nope. Has the Impairing Daggers instead. Oh, yeah. Now the Support Guard is basically dead here as well. Yeah, this is bad. You know, I, I feel like the Red Team is just feeding at this point. Feeding, feeding, feeding. Deep, deep, deep. Unfortunate stuff. Red Team, though. Actually, did manage to disengage and get the side notes pretty effectively, but yeah, Blue now getting their revenge. Found in trouble. Actually, he needs to be very, very careful. Has probably two blocks here, probably a second one in toolkit. He's able to kite away somewhat effectively, but oh boy, the scrapper is on the hunt, guys. Look at this nade scrapper. Oh, oh. <laughs> Blue team Dude, what is this AT, man? This is such a clown fiesta. I. I <laughs> 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 oh man let's see what else is going on here let's see what else yeah goofy get <laughs> why is that wicked what <laughs> do you guys think this is wicked do you guys like goofy games is that what you uh enjoy yeah if you guys want to see more goofy games, please put Wicked in the chat. <laughs> Red team wins a capture point. Nice. 
Okay, here we go. This is another game. This is Souls, aka Breed Bull. <laughs> Can see, guys, he's actually named. Look. Breed Bull. Uh, Unchained Souls, level 80 Vindicator. Battle of Kylas is him. Here he is. Just like that. With the double catalyst. Also in play, Avancine and Ninot. Or Nino, maybe. Who knows? Clarity. Support Guardian. Boom. And Demolish. AKA Vanished. On Thief. Demolish, one of the most powerful PvP players in the history of the game. Rank 1 Legend in StarCraft 2. Zerg Master. Also dead on Thief. Also 413 hate points on Thief. Manages to get out just barely. But oh no, the Rotator! The Rotator's coming! Oh shit, both these rotating around each other. Can the rotator find the kill? Yes, he can. He has rotated. <laughs> there it is. Vanished, unfortunately. Will now bleed out. Gornet on another Harbinger. He's swapping between Tinrog and Gornet. <laughs> Here he goes. Vanish gets cleaved out. Support guard was attempting a revive, but oh, that's going to be pain, actually. Oh, yeah, that is big pain, actually. Yeah. Did you see that? Core guard now Red dead. <laughs> Just like that. Blue team oh, takes a core guard was getting revived there. Souls maybe attempting that. Oh, hang on. Big res there, actually. Gets the core guard back on their feet. Lovely, lovely. And blue team. Probably a little bit sad they didn't get that kill. They do have the double cap, though. They need to defend this node. And yeah, I mean, they are just kind of going for the full brute force approach. Just kill everything. Obliterate the opponent. Annihilate everyone. That is the strategy that blue team is employing. Is it going to work, though? That's the question. Both of these teams could certainly make it through. There's no question about that. Okay, and let's see what's going on here. Red team just losing this fight, pretty much. Catalyst in the down state. Core Guardian tries to get away. Mm, not looking too hot here. Blue team Although Red still point. have the node. They've got that single node over there, so they're kind of okay in this type of situation. Mansion, not looking too hot over here either. There's no real pressure from Red team over there, so they're going to slowly lose their map presence as Blue captures middle. Don't think Red can really interfere with that just yet. Just like that, blue team takes a and there it is. Point. Blue actually pick up another kill onto Avancine while they also have the double cap. It's a little bit scary. There is the support guardian. Signet is up in three seconds. There is some universe where this gets revived, but oh no. Ooh, a massive burst and crowd control combo comes through from Gornet, destroying the guardian completely. Avancine did get revived, but of course they had to trade this revival for their own support. Could they actually revive this? They might be able to. Like, blue team has just forgotten about this happening over here, but no, they haven't. Now they're responding and the damage is coming up. The cleave is going to be a little bit too much, I think, to handle that. That's for sure. Dimash has to try and run away. Gets the cleanse. Saves himself self from oblivion souls Did over here grabs the windmill blue team will actually now end up losing this thing no actually they won't then we have the catalyst there to scare away the thief support guard from red back again hmm. it's a little bit difficult though you can see here uh, that red they are not getting kills they haven't got a kill since all the way back here pretty much they haven't had a kill for like four minutes that isn't good blue team not getting that many kills but we're still getting some, right? And some is better than none. I'm actually, like, somewhat surprised how somewhat slow these games feel, right? They don't feel that fast-paced, you know? There's a lot of damage going out, but I'm not feeling the energy, you know? I, I feel like these games are draining my soul, in fact. Yeah, Blue pick up another two kills. Those are big kills as well. Catalyst and um, Vindicator being removed off the field. That's very, very big. They assign one of their catalysts to grab the mansion over there at the same time. They're thinking about pressuring the windmill. That is good because it will essentially mean their back nodes don't get, well, aren't able to be threatened for a good amount of time if they keep up the pressure on the windmill here. Looks like blue team being a little bit, you know, a little bit conservative though. They're playing Just relatively like chill. They're not blue going completely unhinged. They're not going too crazy here. They're relaxing themselves. 
not going to overcommit. Just want to hold on to that two cap. And honestly, I think that does make sense, right? Like they, their composition is not very good over three nodes. They wouldn't be able to. They'd find themselves very spread thin. Ooh, Gorni gets knocked off. That's a bit spooky for him. I don't think he has the flesh worm, so he won't be able to get back up again. Well, simply just diverts onto souls now and starts bringing the pressure, bringing the pain. Ooh, I think that might be a dead vindicator. Souls in trouble. Might be able to do some kind of port shenanigans with Shira, but no, that's not going to happen. And yeah, the pressure here from Gornet should be enough. Lingering curse even being used. Oh, oh no! He got revved! Souls owns Gornet! Oh no! Souls with the god mode play knocks Gornet into the wall with Revenant downstate. That's actually big. That's going to force a 4v5 for a good amount of time. I mean, that's something, right? Like, <laughs> okay. Oh, Clarity in a bit of trouble. Red team is here to peel. Is it enough, though? Oh, hold on, Guardian. Oh, the thief going crazy. Is there some universe with the res? I think we have a shadow set stop. No, we don't. Oh, the rotator in trouble does go down state. Doesn't rally, actually, because the Guardian had already been fully cleaved at that point. So that could be a bit... Wait, what is this desync, actually? Something weird is happening. It doesn't matter, though. Ah, oh, losing the guard. Very unfortunate. But, of course, uh, 4v5 for a good chunk of time there does actually give Red Team the ability to at least get some level of control over this game. Souls in a bit of trouble does get pushed out here. The Catalyst and the Thief, a little bit too much pressure for the Vindicator to survive, unfortunately. And the team was not able to kind of finish this fight and then help out the Revenants. However, Chunsu now down state. That's the end of that. Two kills in favor of Red. Red Team kind of getting some value out of this Revenant. Imagine... This is actually an insane carry. Right, this is unreal. Um, <laughs> Sol's actually carrying the game. Potentially sending his team into a comeback position as they pick up two more kills. And Sol secures the windmill. Meanwhile, while Chunsu grabs the mansion. One Revenant downstate two is actually hard carrying. Look, I bet you didn't see that one coming, guys. Did you think that Eternity's Requiem was a good skill? Did you think... That the Spear of Archimoros was a good skill. Did you think that Legendary Assassin Stance was good? If you did, you thought wrong. Revenant's only good ability is, in fact, Revenant Downstate 2. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think it hold on. They actually win. And they're not in a bad spot. Their guard is here. Uh, Catalyst. They're actually doing some good work on Dagornet. They're not in a bad spot. Now, this Ellie needs to not die. Well, okay, that's unfortunate. Oh, oh does get the Signet. Good revive there from Clarity. Very good stuff. No Obsidian Flesh, though. Oh, that CC from the Necromancer is huge. Really is. That's the fifth skill in Harbinger Shroud there, guys, of course. A very powerful float ability. And Blue, they land a very crushing blow in that team fight. Of course, they certainly have the better team fight set up. So that is to be expected. But Red Team do actually hold themselves a triple gap temporarily. Now they lose it back down to a double. Oh, they've got to be careful not to lose too much, though. Oh, they lose another Catalyst. That's unfortunate, or rather they lose their second catalyst. Oh, they lose both. Oh, uh, that's bad. Yeah, I think red team maybe pushed their luck a little bit too much in that fight. They can't take those team fights. They need to back it up a little bit there in order to survive. They need to hold on there. Souls does a good job here. Actually keeps the windmill under control for red team. And the guardian has now arrived. That should reinforce and keep this pretty stable, at least for the time being. The catalyst tries to pressure the guard. There's no renewed focus. This is a problem. Red need to get their guard out of trouble. Very nice line there. Good kiting here from Red Guard. But, of course, the uh, Catalyst, they are insatiable. Very hard to get away from, especially on a Guardian. Okay, cooldown's coming back, though. Some good positioning here. Good uh, safe play by our Red Guard. Problem is, though, is that, yeah, now Blue Team get a full rebound off that. Picking up both of the Catalysts uh, from the Red Team. Getting both of those kills, and I think they've secured themselves this victory here. It was a very nice attempt at a comeback there. Very well played by Souls. Souls definitely MVP. Most powerful player. Uh, maybe there's some decap shenanigans that can happen. But I, I think right now, if I'm blue team, I just force a fight. That's what I would do. Uh, you just force a fight here um, and play for one node pretty much. Because one node plus a bunch of kills wins you the game if you're blue. And there's absolutely no way that red team is going to be able to win this fight convincingly. 
And because of that, they can just auto win the game. You can see that's exactly what they're doing. You can see here going for that kill there on the Catalyst. Core Guard is down, say, 10 points in the pocket there. That's his 4 6 8. Grab one node, and that's GG pretty much. Uh, Souls, valiant last stand here. Tries to hold on in the 1v3, but simply cannot do it. Not enough pressure. Well, not enough sustain. I mean,. That would be a bit broken if he could survive 1v3, to be fair. Vanish coming in for a desperate last hold. Will have the Dagger Storm to survive here and should be able to hold against the Necromancer for a good chunk of time. Uh, but I don't think it's really going to be enough here. Um, it will not be enough. We have Blue Team, Blue team grab Thief the grabbing the mansion. They secured the middle node. This is die on node territory right now for our Blue Team. Blue Team, like time that. to AFK. Blue Team takes a capture point. There it is. You can see the support guardian simply waiting for the game to end. Likewise, I go with uh, the rotator over here too. Gornet did actually um, end up managing to kind of decapture this at some point, but it doesn't really matter as the game is over. It's going to be French cheese versus Nico Nico Nico, of course. That's uh, very much predicted uh, for this one. And then Under the Willow Tree versus Chunsu. I think both of these games are actually somewhat interesting. Um, I do think that obviously French cheese pretty heavily favored. Uh, in their matchup, and I think, well, we actually saw this matchup already, right? We already saw Under the World Tree actually achieve victory uh, over their opponents in a pretty convincing fashion. Uh, however, I do believe that Chunsu's team here is very powerful. We have very solid players uh, on blue team. They could certainly win. Can they turn it around? However, you know, in, in some ways, hmm, I'm just thinking about tournament storyline. Realistically, I don't think Chunsu's team can really contest the French. I don't think their composition is actually good enough. Um, and I know that sounds harsh, but I don't see Necro... I don't see Necro being effective enough um, to... I, I think it would get ripped to shreds uh, by the French comp. Um, and that's that's not Gornet's fault. It's just that Necro just does not... I don't think it's very effective in the current metagame, uh, to be frank. So I think Under the Willow Tree has the best shot at contesting the French. So I'm kind of hoping for an under the Willow Tree victory here um, to go to the finals to face French cheese. That's it. Ah. Okay. But then again, I am maybe uh, calling it too early here. Maybe. We can have a huge upset. And the French will be destroyed by the red team. It's possible. It is possible. It is a possibility. We shall see. Go Power Reaper. Team fight carry. I'm not sure about that, to be honest. I am not sure about that one. But we'll see, guys. Nora's playing Connie Reaper. Yeah, I'm not sure he'd play Connie Reaper in competitive though, in competitive matches. I'm almost certain he's probably playing Catalyst um, in this particular monthly AT, I'd say. The Captain Fallon build? It is. The Tools Holosmith, I believe. It is. We have Tools. Static Discharge. Invisible Analysis. Kinetic Battery. Explosives. Short Fuse. Aim Assisted Rocket. The and Flashbang. Explosive. I'd duck if I were you. An Engineer is as good as their tool belt, I'd say. Burn it up. That, that's, the that's the description for Holosmith? <laughs> 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 That's pretty funny, actually. I like it. Try keeping up with this, Daredevil. Watch your step. Strike when they're weak. Hold Whoa! Your points. Seize there. Justice Rove and Courage carry me forward. On my honor, I will An protect you. My conviction armor. shields me. Capricorn. My power shapes and bends the world. There you go. <laughs> All right. Let's do this. Let's see what red team have got here. Ah, and they're going to go for a big kind of counter push. And this makes sense. I do, I kind of like this response here from uh, red team. I think that they were like, you know what? We know you're going to go for a three node push. So therefore, we all counter that. And that's exactly what they did. 
So an intelligent start here for Red, actually, to be fair to them. They immediately pick up a kill on Riken. And now, of course, go into this next stage of the game with a bit of an upper hand. Uh, they already have some good pressure onto a spree at the same time. And it is just worth noting that it is the same comp that we saw from earlier with the Chronomancer double catalyst thief and the Tempest from the French. Ooh, and Fallon is going to get smushed here. So I feel like the scary thing here for Fallon is that he only has one stun break, right? And that there's a lot of CC in the meta right now. It's pretty difficult. Of course, there is a support guardian that will help with stability. But yeah, this hollow is... It's a bit of a target, right? Like, Hollow does a lot of damage, and actually, it can carry games. We've seen we've seen it carry games pretty damn hard, actually, um, in some previous tournaments in, in Ranked, of course. But, ooh, this is tough. Like, uh, Fallon is just going to be a, uh, a complete target for the entire game, and those catalysts are going to be a serious problem for him to deal with. I fear that CMC's work is not done. Yeah. It is not over. Catalyst Reborn. Catalyst Eternity. Catalyst Infinity. This is a spree. Do you think, this is, do you think a spree model his character after himself? What do you guys think? Do you think he looks like this in real life? <laughs> this is... I, I, if you guys want to know this, this is actually how Draza sees himself in real life. That's actually true, by the way. That's actually true. He he is like, yeah, I, I'm a I'm a <laughs> I'm a fearsome monster. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Let's check out the other game. Let's see what we got. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, look, guys, I've got to give you guys content. We've got to roast some of the players sometimes, I think. You know, that's how we got to we got to go hard sometimes. All right, then. So we have on the red team, the Reliable Hospital, Chunsu, the Rotator, Fly, CMC despawned again, Chatoyant. I don't know what that is. I guess it's probably Chatoyant, actually. Uh, with Wolf Spider. Tinrog. Gornet. Red team wins a capture point. Insane. Come against the blue team. It is wing trade. It is Demon Chungus 2. It is We Burn Cold. It is Sakaya. And Grey Veils. And blue team took an early advantage. However, that advantage has now evaporated into nothing as the first bell is about to come up. Ooh, however. We have got problems here. If a support dies right before we have this big team fight objective come up, that is not going to be good whatsoever for the red team. Chunsu needs to get out of here and get out of here fast. The Herald is on his tail. That permanent chill, very, very annoying to deal with there. I think this Guardian is basically done for. Ooh, that's very unfortunate. The revive came through too. We did have a death on this Spellbreaker, but they did get revived back up. And now, this is a little bit scary for red. They're not going to be able to engage that bell very effectively. It looks like they're not actually going to bother with it whatsoever. No one's really in position to contest it. Just going to go ahead and leave that one. 25 points to blue. That? Ah, that's a bit unfortunate, to be honest. That's not what we want to see there for red. Now, red still have a bit of map control here, but they're about to lose that as the Chronomancer of Demon Chungus 2 will get into position. Now, Wing Trade did end up dying overall here, actually. The Spellbreaker gets basically chased down by the Thief, uh, and I believe one of the Catalysts eventually. However, I think giving away a bell is a little bit spooky. I think perhaps they aren't super worried about that because they feel confident they can win the team fight. So that's something that's worth noting, is that they're like, okay, well, you know, we can sack the first spell because we're pretty confident we're going to get all the other ones. Right? As long as we actually have our support in there, we've got the Necromancer uh, in play. It should be okay. However, I certainly wouldn't underestimate the team fight presence. Like, Condi Herald does a lot of damage. The longer this thing survives, it will just pump and pump and pump and pump pretty much forever. Its damage output is very, very high in long protracted engagements. So that is also something that is kind of uh, worth watching out for here. Demon Chungus 2 has been thiefed. The Rotator finds that kill. Wing Trade in position to continue to contest him. Blue team now getting a little bit ahead. Yes, we have Peepo Cheer. Please use Peepo Cheer to cheer for the team that you wish to win. Or maybe just put it anyway. Yeah, we have a disconnect, unfortunately, uh, on the red team. That is not ideal. Blue team grabbed a capture point. 
Not sure what happened there. Maybe they got stuck in something. They are actually off lines. This actually does not appear to be a stuck situation. This unfortunately does appear to be a disconnection from red. Which is obviously not ideal for them. And, and well, I mean, to be frank, that basically means that blue is almost guaranteed to end up winning, of course. But yeah, there you go. A tactical disconnection. And I don't think that works, though. You know, I, I don't think you can... You can't win trade by disconnecting in your own game. It doesn't make any sense. No. Brazil win trading. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm not so sure about that one. Well, I'm not sure we can really put this one, guys, down to a win trade situation, as we actually did already see the blue team win somewhat convincingly, actually, uh, in the early rounds. Worth noting about that, guys. And there is no respect here. Uh, when I say respect, I mean, I don't mean like literal respect. I mean, there's no, there, it's not being respected. It's not actually a 4v4, right? Um, red team is actually simply a 4v5 right now. Blue team continuing to play with five players. And you know what? Let me actually kind of back up the, uh, let me kind of back up the blue team here a little bit. At the end of the day, right, this is a competition, right? Uh, I think it's nice to respect, but I actually don't think it's, it's necessary. Um, it's not needed. I don't think you should feel honor bound like to respect a 4v5 if your opponent has a disconnection. However, this of course does essentially make the game more or less over at this stage. And we are going to see blue team going to the finals here. They will have to face the French. There it is. That is the end of that. Chunsu bleeding out, but it's a triple cap. Red team AFK doesn't look like Wolf Spider is going to be able to make it back in. But... We'll see. The French are awaiting. French cheese in the finals of the monthly automated tournament will be facing under the willow tree. Red team wins All right. Point. Here it is. Well, to be honest, blue team, they did okay. They did okay into the French roster. I have to give them that. You know, I really, really do. They, you know, they did well. But the French took control, right? They were able to take control in kind of the mid to late game and have a very convincing victory. It's going to have to be a big pop-off, guys. We're going to have to see a massive, huge pop-off here from the red team. There's no other way about it. They're going to have to go for it. I think they'll be sticking with their same composition, same strategy, all that kind of good stuff, guys. Ooh. Floating. Blue team grabbed a capture point. Frog. If the entire chat is full of floating, the French choke and completely throw the finals. That's the only way. That's it. Ah, Nara with the raid. You know what I like about this, guys? Is that there's always been this big thing. There's been this big debate, guys. Um, what's harder, PvE or PvP? You know, this is always... There's been a big debate around this. Always has been. And now we finally know the answer, guys. We can finally confirm that PvE is harder than PvP, as Helio, one billion times monthly AT winner, squillion times winner, has been defeated 1v1 by the Beast on camera. It's uh, It's been captured on film. We have seen it. And this confirms that PvP is easy. PvE, way harder. <laughs> the Beast is far more powerful than the hardest monthly AT team. Unlucky. <laughs> can we see the beast kill again? I think we can. We've got a little bit of downtime here. We can we can maybe take a look. Right, let me we can let's go ahead and just see this. I think the or this I'm just in grab over from them. Yep, uh-huh. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> I just died to the beast. 
Wait, Helia? no, you didn't. Wait, but Helia. Yo. Wait, hey, what? Wait, what? I thought Wait, I could. What? I'm limit oh, testing. No, I'm, I'm, I'm limit oh. testing. I'm limit testing. I'm limit, limit testing. I'm limit testing. <laughs> I gotta do this. I'm limit testing, oh limit testing, limit testing, limit testing, limit testing. Ah! <laughs> Yo, I got, I got a million people on me. Ah! Look, you get, can you see it here, guys? Look, it says Spawn got the kill. <laughs> In the bottom right, guys. <laughs> it's just unfortunate. That's unfortunate, guys. Yeah. 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 Dude, I didn't want to press my... Need help, need help. I didn't want to press something. Yeah. Spawn here is the true power, guys. The true powerful NPC. The true enemy of the automated tournament. All right, let's go to the finals. It's NA Finals coming through right now, guys. French cheese versus under the willow tree. I believe I'm being told this is Brazil. I don't know which one of them is Brazil because they all have confusing names. Uh, but it's one of them. This is big. On the blue team, it is French cheese zealoth. Tempest. Here it is. There's the Tempest build. Fire Tempest. Boom. Maybe a little bit scared. Scared of the... Condition pressure coming out. There's a lot of Condi pressure, guys. That Condi Herald. Going for fire for more clans, potentially. Draza. Critical Strikes Thief. Daredevil. Big damage. Berserker. With her own divinity. With, of course, the Dagger Pistol. And the Short Bow. Kill. Chronomancer. Condi Chronomancer. Boom. There it is. Illusions. Chaos Chronomancer. Well Heal. Gravity Well, Omega Mirror Images Clones, Big Pulsing Weakness, and of course, the Aegis as well, with Well of Precognition. Esprit and Riken, Catalyst, you guys know the drill. Some slight variations here. We have Armor of Earth for Esprit, whereas Riken going with the Signet of Air as a stun break. But other than that, I believe basically the same builds. As you can see there, very, very similar setups. On the blue team, we actually didn't see any changes. It was a, just a kind of a meme relog. It was a bait. It was a, a hilarious joke. But here it is. It's going to be Grey Veils here on the Condition Herald. There it is. Enjoy that build. We have Sakaya, okay, Langelin on the Thief with the Marauder Amulet over the Berserk Amulet. A little bit more HP this time around. Some different abilities too. Signet of Shadows alongside the Shadow Portal. We Burn Cold Fountain. It is the Sage Guardian. Sage Amulet Guardian here. For, I guess, more more burning damage. No, wait, what? Why does it say Spear of Justice? The fuck? I don't know. I, wait, what is this, actually? Wait, my tooltips are just completely bugged. It says he's a Dragon Hunter for some reason. I like that. That's good. And finally, we have the Chronomancer. The Demon Chungus on the Chrono. And the Warrior with Wing Trade. All right, then. Let's see how this one goes. Blue so, once again, uh, we see the French doing what they do best, which is moving out on the map and controlling it immediately, getting that three-node push, and, well, so far they're handling it extremely well. Uh, the red team not able to really get anything done early on, as they were in the previous time we saw these teams go against each other, actually, and this definitely is going to be the concern, I think, is will red team Blue be team able to generate point. kills? That's the thing. And in some ways, I think, hmm, it's going to be a little bit tricky for them to actually get kills. I'm not sure if they have the damage here. I, I think a big problem actually is this big node, right? The Herald, in a way, isn't able to be as annoying as it otherwise would be because the node is bigger. Like, Herald loves these kind of enclosed um, spaces, right? Where it can really just get its AoE covering the entire area. But this larger node, it's actually going to be significantly like weaker. Blue as it can't really do that much here. It wants to be on one of the smaller nodes. On the big one, it's way weaker. And well, I mean, it's a triple cap already, actually. Unfortunately. Um, red team not able to make the magic happen like the last time. Yeah, and they're just struggling to do damage here. The, you can see the health bars for blue, right? 
there's not really a lot of pressure happening. We have the Catalyst here, and yeah, Thief's not going to do anything there with the Warrior. That's going to be completely useless. There's no way that's going to generate any value. Red Thief being chased down by Drazi here as well, by the Blue Thief. Team fight on middle is completely stable thanks to the Tempest here. Tempest is getting hit very hard. Might have to pop Obsidian here or an Earth Shield. Gets the Earth Shield. Might have to uh, do a Water Overload or something like that, potentially, at some point. Oh, well, doesn't have Obsidian. So Tempest does die, actually. So we do finally see a kill come through. So it's not going to be a 500-0, at least. It's not revivable. That's going to be five points in the pocket for Red. Red Thief is down. Say, ah, oh, yeah, that's going to be a good counter kill. However, I think it will get revived here. I don't think this is really killable anymore. So there is that. That is going to be not a 500-0, but... Can Red Team really get anything out of this? I'm not sure if they totally can. Wing Trade now in the down state getting taken out. Blue Team uh, just trying to continuously contest middle. They're not really fighting for it right now. They're down a player. Their support just, just came back. So they'll be able to begin this repush now. But I don't think Red Team will actually be able to get this node. Thief Jewel over there. That means this node is going to be essentially at best neutral. Uh, I don't think that Red Team will be able to actually full on cap this. Draza needs to be a little bit careful. She does end up taking very heavy damage. Gets his heal skill off though. In this situation, but it's actually incredibly low. Has one dodge left over, a bit of evasion, maybe on short bow. Ooh, does go down, say. Can Esprit revive this? I don't think he can, actually. That should be a confirmed kill, unless maybe Zealus can get here in time. Oh, gets it. Nice. Yeah, good movement hit by Zealus. Manages to get here right at the right moment to save the day and get Draza back on his feet, denying five points to the opponent there. Five to 250. I mean, this is. Yeah, this is not good. This is not exactly an epic final, I'm afraid, guys. Uh, the French, I mean, whatever happened, they must, did, they must have just made a few slip-ups. I mean, this is actually, it was a pretty close game um, in the in the, in the the Swiss rounds, right? These teams actually played together. It was, you know, what? It was, you know, it, up until 200 points, it was relatively even. And then the French really ran away with that game there. But this is complete domination. Red team just not really having the punch they need to get this done. And even when they do manage to get a kill, they don't really have the rotational force to get anything done either. Uh, the writing's on the wall here. There is a cap here for the red team, which is nice. But, oh, yeah, the thief just comes in, moves in, lunges, gets that kill. Big damage. Huge DPS. And this is not looking good. Yeah, five elementalists last time. Three elementalists this time. Maybe with another patch, we can get down to one elementalist per team. We're on the way, right? We are on the way. 19 points for red. What an accomplishment indeed for them. Uh, wing trade going to fully bleed out now. Core Guardian is going to get shut down completely here. I believe the damage from the Catalyst is just a little bit too much. Blue Thief moving for the decap. Finds the decap. And, well, this is going to be the end of the game, guys. This is the end of this. Just like that. The game looks cool. Is this free to play? It is free to play indeed, guys. It is a free to play situation. Yeah. Very exciting. Very exciting finals here, guys. Guild Wars 2 PvP is alive every single month pvp gets better and better and better it just feels so good just feels like so that. good to have a fresh alive pvp scene guys it really really does it's fantastic stuff wizards are strong triple wizard here guys zealith i mean look check this out now this is big zealith is a fire water wizard i imagine that's actually beyond the wildest fantasies of most elementalist players guys that's true yes he is actually a fire water wizard if he was a pokemon that wouldn't even make any sense um we have uh arcane and air wizards from esprit and Riken. right yeah and that's pretty big and of course uh esprit i i expect this is actually a role play pick guys you can check this out uh, he's actually got Armor of Earth. He is an Earth Wizard. You'll notice here he has Fortified Earth. He's camping Earth right now. That's because Esprit is actually, um, you know, he loves dirt, right? He's a, a big fan of soil. Big soil fan, as you can see here. Soil Wizard. <laughs> NA versus EU show match. I mean, we can say, if people want to go, we can make that happen. Um, but, I mean, obviously, I, I'm not sure if people actually want to do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Lord is now being taken. Do they have enough time? That's the big question here. Are they going to actually be able to take the Lord in time? They've got about 20 seconds to do it. They're going for the casters. Here they go. Do they have the DPS? For I think they actually do. The Lord is healing. That actually might be a problem. Oh, the Lord heals. I don't think they have it. Oh, can they do it? 
They've got to get the stop now, but they don't have stability. Oh, Esprit didn't use Armor of Earth. They did not get the Lord in time. That is the end of that. But there it is. GG. Wow. 26 to 500. French cheese victory. And that's the end of the game, guys. Frenchies. They fully achieve victory. They are the ultimate team for I don't know how many times in a row, but they cannot be beaten. They cannot be stopped. Someone must defeat the French. But unfortunately, it doesn't look like that's happening anytime soon. Bots versus bots. I don't think any of these I don't think any of these players were bots. Okay, you could definitely say that um, they're French, because that is true, but not bots. Yeah, that was a monthly AT. Uh, definitely wasn't feeling the energy on this one, right? The monthly AT was a little low energy. Um, I hate to say it, but it, it definitely was. There is the dragon, guys. Pretty good one, I'd say, actually. I think this is uh, one of the cool gizmos. Look at it. Spinning around there. Pretty big. Pretty big stuff. Pretty big stuff. The monthly AT happens too dang early. I mean, it does, ha it does, I guess it is pretty early for you. Swapper. I like Swapper. Swapper is a very good emote, in my opinion. It's, it's very uh, high tier. It's high tier, guys. Esprit wants an interview. I mean, I can, I'm fine. I'm calling Esprit. Hang on, I'm calling Esprit, guys. I'm calling him. Let's go. Here we go. Hello. Hello, hello. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what do you... I, I don't really have much to say, to be honest. What, what, what do you think of this, th this tournament? How did that go? I, I was in holiday this week, so I played uh, quite a lot, a lot. Okay. And uh, is people are asking for people to play MHE. They say they have no team. I can play MHE, I have no team. Yeah, okay, okay. But come on, be motivated. You are, you are FK in Game Wars 2 the whole, the whole week. <laughs> and you're playing, like, you're doing PvP and you're not doing the MHE. Make your own team. Be, you're wasting your time in PvP. Doing nothing. Like, and, and we have no one to face. It's the exact same on NA. People think you can beat USA, blah, 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 blah but they're not playing. Like. <laughs> <laughs> look at Fuji, bro. Look at Fuji. Always complaining, but he never swapped to LA. Yep. To LA. <laughs> Yeah, it, it is definitely, you got to be adaptable, right? You know, you have to, you know, you, you can't and, just and, make, I mean, you got to be willing like, to swap, right? You have to be willing to like, change to a new build, it's right? Probably, it's, like, it's not normal, like, we have, like, lowest population in PvP than in World vs. World, when there is nothing to win, like, you got, like, 10 guild, 15, 10 guilds of uh, 15 members playing, uh, like, two screaming the, the week, <laughs> two hours, we have, no one is screaming in PvP, like, like people are, are, ju are just like lazy. Lazy. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they are slacking in PvP for no reason. <laughs> no thing. They do nothing. They are like playing Guild Wars 2 for nothing. They are slacking in PvP for nothing. Like, I don't understand. Uh, uh, like, what you say on stream is true. Like, nobody wanna play. Like, and they are complaining the whole time on Twitch chat. All like, <laughs> stop being in Twitch chat. So you're saying people need to make teams and put in some yeah. effort and try, yeah. and then maybe they exactly. can maybe they exactly. can challenge Chipot. the French cheese. Chip Chipot, Chipot. Oh, I'm playing Guild Wars 2. I start on Guild Wars 1. I was three fucking years old. Chipot. Okay. Like, and people think it's gonna take one one month to beat Worms. Like, when you are new to the game, look at Raiken, bro. He was playing. He was he was going from. He, he went to Fortnite. To Guild Wars 2, bro, he was moose clicking on his stream. <laughs> like, uh, I was telling him to stop moose clicking his fucking <laughs> shit. He fucking tired the game, and he's one of the best players on EU right now. Like, and same for Zeolith, and same for Kinmaj. Just they play, they play the game, try, trying to figure out what is the best class, playing most of the class, not picking only one class, like some players on EU or NA, and they're playing the game. Like, yeah. 
Yeah, you have to be adaptable. You've got to be willing to change and switch things up. That's for sure, right? I think that is one of the mistakes that people make is that they only play one build, right? They don't, you know, they'll only play one particular profession rather than playing multiple because, yeah, it doesn't work. That's definitely one of the strengths of, I think, a lot of the top teams and definitely the uh, the French, right? The French always play what's good, right? They play the meta. They figure yeah, out what's uh, good and, and play the strong stuff, right? Yeah, and we play. We are not complaining on balance discord every week oh. or whatever. Complaining, and we are just playing. Like, if if Kata is good, you, you gonna you, you you have to play Kata, brother. Like you have to play Kata. That's all it is. It's like in League of Legends, bro. If you can, uh, I don't know. Like, uh, uh, Azir is good. You have to play Azir. That's all it is. I don't know. You can complain, but it, I mean, if Annette not doing his work, like I mean, not uh, nerfing uh, too 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 fast. It's, is like you can do anything about that like yeah i think that's true and, you know, and you are afk and they are afk in the, in the, like in the pvp lobby the whole all day i saw them and yeah. i was asking them you're playing mh no i don't have team blah 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 make your team bro make your team this is a big call out I and mean, this is a huge call out here uh from a spree you know I, I've got to say though, why why do you think people don't make teams? I don't. Uh, well, uh, I think this like they are not motivated. But I, the, the things I don't understand, they are playing the whole day, the whole day. But they are not doing any team. They, they don't. I, I mean, they, they think like a good player thinks like good players who are not in the team in the team. Thinks we're gonna pick, you're gonna be in the in the, the winning team without doing anything. Okay. What do you? Th I mean, let, how do we solve this problem though? How do we? How do we help people become motivated to make teams and to put in the work, put in the effort, put in the practice, scrim and win? What do you think? This is there a way? Is there something we can do, or does Aina have to do it? Or are we doomed? Is are we doomed forever? In PvP, uh, I think I mean, I mean the, the thing I don't understand it's when I compare to World versus World Tipot. Okay. There is nothing to win. It's 15 versus 15. There is 10, 10 team, at least on EU, on EU at least. Okay. There is 10 team. It's 15 versus 15. PvP is five versus five. You have uh, uh, like an, ar an arena, in, uh, a real arena to train uh, like you have everything you have daily 80 when you are winning gold in one of the world i'm losing gold when i'm playing one of the world tipot what the fuck so that's why i don't understand there is most more more people on world versus world than pvp like when there is nothing to lose yeah okay okay i'm what if people just don't like pvp <laughs> uh, i mean they only play because they're addicted <laughs> Uh, maybe, maybe they are under, under drugs, you know, like Benzo, but uh, I don't know. Okay. Okay. So what should we do? How do we, how do we do it? How do we save PvP? How do we make people make teams? What do I, what should I do, Esprit? Tell me what I'm, to I'm, do. Chipo, chipo. I'm gonna make all, all you team now. I'm gonna drop people in. I'm gonna get team. I'm gonna create team, chipo. Wait, what? Wait, uh, I, I actually don't know what you just... I don't know. I don't understand. I said I'm going to create some teams. Oh. No. Myself. But, like, I'm going to pick players, ask them if they want to play together, and they have to stick because, like, uh, people are lazy to do it okay. themselves. I already asked some some guys. They are ready to, to practice, but uh, they need some other team to scream them. But... Yeah, I mean that's maybe that's what you need to do. You should all make a team. All all French should make another team and then fight uh, each that, other in the monthly. Yeah. Uh, but it's not a, it's not a French wars to way. It's a, it's a, like a Europe and NA. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> and also, uh, guys, uh, stop uh, dodging us in scream. Like, uh, come on. <laughs> Come on, it's uh, useless. You are not training. You are not uh, like people uh, are decline uh, daily at They decline daily at against us. Like, uh, come on, just play the game. Don't don't 
be scary, try to improve, and it will be done. Maybe it's gonna, it gonna take time, but it would be it would be nice a day. Yeah, I mean, that would be pretty big. I want to see more teams, you know, I, I definitely... This AT was a little disappointing, I think. Um, there were not that many teams. Um, not a lot of exciting games, I think. Um, so it, it really sucks. Hopefully that we can make some more teams. We can add some systems and hopefully make the game more exciting for people. Make the game yeah. uh, worth trying. Because I think that people just don't think it's worth it right now. They don't want. They want the gizmo, but they don't want it enough, right? They need to want it more. They they need they need something to really go for, you know. For sure. Yeah, but at, at the same time, it's only five people getting the gizmo like a month, you know. It's not a lot, so... It's true, it's not a lot. You have to accept it, like, when I'm losing, bro, it's not... Uh, it's my fault, huh? It's not uh, about uh, anyone. Yeah. Not CMC's fault? <laughs> I mean, uh, CMC, please, please, don't make Daredevil back in the meta. This class sucks. <laughs> Everyone can stuck you, you can be silver and stuck me between two points. Please, please. Nerf, nerf Daredevil, I don't wanna... About this class, make Spectre good. It's the fun, the funnier, funniest uh, chief class right now. Don't make the Daredevil good as well. Yeah. And uh, and Deadeye, please. What about yeah? yeah well. I mean, do you, what what's the worst thief? Would you rather have Deadeye or Daredevil? Uh, well, I think Deadeye without Shadow Art is is better than Daredevil. Okay. What do you think of Azadome? Azadome obviously not very happy right now. He, you know, Deadeye got kind of wrecked in the last, last patch, you know? The elite skill got uh, Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, you know, it's, it's kind of useless now. Yeah. <laughs> it's freaking useless, but I don't get it. Uh, who was it for that and the way they did that? But... Okay. Okay, okay, okay. You know, you should play on, um, you guys should play on NA and face USA. Teapot. I don't want to stomp USA on NA. It's, oh? They will be mad after. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, look, I mean, look you, and now you've cut, you've said that. You've kind of made a call out there. You've, you've kind of flamed. Ah, <laughs> uh, Teapot. We asked for a 5v5, uh, uh, 5 catalysts. Months. That's true. That would have been pretty funny, actually. I would have liked to see the 5 catalysts uh, versus the USA comp. That would have been very funny. I mean, I don't know. Maybe we can get some. We can maybe get some show matches going potentially. Um, if obviously both teams want to, uh, we can make that happen. Of course, eventually there. Well, hopefully, if I can find enough teams, we will try and do Motor Three. Uh, finally, French victory potentially. Of course, right? That could finally be a. Fr I mean, if there was going to be, if there's going to be another Motor, would you be feeling confident? You know, would you? You know, be going for a big win. Chipot, as I said last time, don't make a patch one week before Mota, please. Yeah. <laughs> please, don't make a patch one week before Mota. You are ruining every team craft. <laughs> last time, they, they nerfed Vinji last one week before. Please, don't make that again. Like. Okay, okay. But if there's no patch, if you know there isn't a patch right before <laughs> Torn, then easy win? Like, you think easy win? I think... Yeah, maybe we, we, sh we should be prepared. Like last time, I, I had to swap on Kata last last uh, last second. I didn't play this this class. Like uh, I didn't play this class because it was freaking trash <laughs> <laughs> before it. So I didn't. Uh, I had to play it against Green Jack, who is spamming this even if it's trash because he's playing Wait, Eli what? only. Wait, what? No, I mean he's spamming Kata even if the class uh, is bad. Not him. Okay. So, so it was way better than me on Qatar. Like I have to say it, and uh, and that's it. Huh? Okay. Well, there you go, I guess. And uh, do you have any final final thoughts? I guess. <laughs> uh, uh, no. Uh, we can tell the we can tell it the, this Basil kid to have a wait, wait, new. What? That's it. Huh? So you you just you want to deny Basil from getting Gizmo? You, you know you. Ah, uh, bro, Basil should be should be perma ban on Guild Wars 2. Listen to me. Like me, I was toxic when I was younger, you know. But him, 
is, is even older and he's still he's still dumb. <laughs> And everyone would be agreeing uh, to chat. Uh, you can ask anyone. It, he, he, would, he would be agree with me. Okay. Well, there it is, I guess. That's uh, that's content. Yeah. Yeah. The French are reformed. They are now pillars of the community. Uh, yeah. It's going to be going to have a second French team. Mm -hmm. Oh, second French team. So, we're so gonna only get one in French two. finals, right? Only French yeah, finals. Yeah. No one else, even exactly. in the finals. Exactly. You see, already Payne. Payne got the French cheese. He's French now. So. That's it. You need to have only French in the top eight, right? Only in the elimination. So eight teams, uh -huh. eight French. Boy, it would be hard. <laughs> Four, 40 French in PP. <laughs> I don't have them, like... Yeah. I see uh, pain in French cheese as well. Pain is uh, honorary French, like uh, allowed to be French. Yeah, he, 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 he left Ion, he's French now. He's yeah. fully French. He... <laughs> he's reformed. <laughs> That's big. That is big. Yeah. What, what are your, um, I'm actually super curious, what are your uh, voice comms like? Like, uh, you know, communication? Uh, is it I mean, like very, is, uh, very high like, energy? Like very, very intense? Or relaxed? I mean, it depends. Like, on the default, I was tilted. And I was like tilted <laughs> against the lead. <laughs> because he was feeding, but uh, I mean, he, he, throw, he, he throwed the first game bro, against Basil. Like, he didn't play fire. Bro. What the fuck is that? He didn't play fire on Ely. And, um, I mean, we fixed it, and uh, you see finals, it was a storm. Yes, yes, yeah, very, very clean game in finals. Yeah, but uh, if you want to see it comes, we, there is some uh, VOD on uh, the Ritz uh, YouTube channel. Ah, from a, From, a, uh, I think, uh, uh, January MAT. Okay. I think. You can see then. We can see the, uh, see the content on Zealith YouTube channel, guys. If you want to see French gaming, then that's where you want to be. That's where you want to be. Okay, I guess I'll let. I think I'll let you go. I will. Uh, yeah, yeah. Congratulations, of course. Well played. Another victory secured yeah. for France yet again. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, and uh, as well, I'm. Uh, I'm the. I have the most gizmo new now. Oh really? Yeah, with uh, Misha, I think. Ah. And next month, uh, I'm going for the record uh, teapot. Oh wow! World record, EU record gizmos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, impressive. Very impressive. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Chipot. It yes. was a nice cast. cast. Thank you, sir. Indeed. GG. Well, there you have it. There you have it. That is something. That's definitely something. Esprit. Worms leader. French leader. Monthly AT winner. 